The story begins with the fact that in a small cafe in the middle of the day, a girl and her potential employee tried to find out more about the vacancy. The girl looked not poor, but on the contrary, her ears were decorated with gold earrings, she was dressed in a custom-made suit and on her chest there was a necklace made of natural corundum. For the guy, all these rattles were a good sign, he already imagined how he could make a fortune, thanks to his rich boss. The indignant woman asked the guy if he was blind for an hour if he responded to this vacancy. The employer's index finger pointed to the laptop which contained all the requirements for the employee and also separately highlighted that the candidate must be a woman. The girl once again indignantly repeated that she does not need boys, she is looking for girls for this vacancy. The boy was not embarrassed by such a demand, he asked the girl to calm down and discuss everything, and if something did not suit her, he would leave. The guy also said that it wouldn't take much of the girl's time and the boss looked at her wristwatch. The girl understood that she had enough time and gave the guy the opportunity to prove himself. He repeated the vacancy, the employee was required to have the skills of a consultant who would help him succeed on a blind date. The guy's fingers touched the laptop keyboard and he said that he had experience in such areas. According to rough statistics, the rate of successful dates for women with long hair is 4.35 higher than those with short hair, the guy said. Also, compared to the success rate of a woman with a higher education, the success rate reaches approximately 2.23%, the guy continued. But the girl stopped him and said that she was not at all interested in all these statistics, which had nothing to do with reality. He said that in this case, he will be frank and create the best blind dating system for the girl, with which she will certainly find her ideal partner. The guy said that they were simply destined to meet today and asked the girl how about taking out insurance with a 20% discount. The girl said that the guy pretended to be a fool for half a day and was simply wasting her time, but the boy himself did not want to just let the lady go. The girl didn't want to listen to the guy anymore and, saying that she only needed a woman for work, was about to leave. But the guy didn't want to just miss this opportunity and tried to detain the girl with his hand. He reiterated that he is dedicated to his work and unquestioningly meets all needs, so the girl has nothing to worry about. Then the guy's hand unhooked from the sofa and he decided that it was worth showing his skills clearly. The guy went to the toilet and asked the employer to wait no more than 10 minutes and not go anywhere. He asked for a little more time to surprise the girl and she became interested, she decided to stay and see what he was up to. In the men's restroom, two guys were relieving themselves and out of nowhere, a girl appeared and came out of the stall. They were very surprised to meet a girl in the men's restroom, one of them even had a cigarette fall out of his teeth. The newly minted girl went to her employer and her voice was very feminine and gentle. It was a guy in disguise who said that it didn't matter to him whether he was a girl or a guy, he could do any job in any guise. The boss immediately changed her attitude towards the candidate and called him along, the guy tried to find out about his payment, but the girl assured him that he would never have financial problems. The guy, dressed as a girl, arrived at the office with his new boss and was glad that he would work in such a huge company. Everyone addressed the girl as if she were directorly, everyone greeted her and respectfully made way for her. The guy couldn't get enough of the fact that his new boss was so high status, he was counting his future millions. He rightly noted that the girl was very rich, and he also asked how she could be afraid about meetings with men, if in this case they should all end in success. The girl, trying to answer all the questions of the new employee, introduced herself as Li Xiao, the president of the large leisure company. Li Xiao took out some papers from the nightstand and said that this is a confidential document, after the guy signs it, he will find out about the job responsibilities. The guy quickly ran his eyes over the contract and assessed all the bonuses and money that would come to him. Li Xiao began to speak in more detail, the two companies decided to enter into a fictitious marriage for the well-being of the companies between Li Xiao and Hensher. Li Xiao continued, in two years, her girl and one of Hanshi's three sons should get married, in other words, this wedding will be like a blind date. But the work is not so simple. Li Xiao's daughter has special needs, her current appearance does not quite correspond to Han Shi's status. For a girl, it is necessary for a guy to turn her girls into a real and graceful lady over the course of these two years, whom everyone will admire. The guy thought that it would be too easy for such a period of time and he would be able to do it. But the guy also wanted to earn more money and decided to immediately disagree to be paid more. The guy, happy inside, 
didn't show it at all and said that he still had to think about this proposal. But Li Xiao understood what the guy was getting at and, throwing a substantial amount on the table, said that this was an advance, and she would pay the rest upon completion of the work. The guy looked at the stack of money with great desire, but decided that he could beg for even more and said that he would think a little anyway. Li Xiao added that she will inform all her employees about his insurance which he offered earlier. Here the guy could no longer resist and said that he agreed, his head already had pictures of huge mountains of money and a luxurious, rich life. After some time, the consultant who was supposed to make Li Zhao's daughter a princess was already standing near her house. The guy's eyes shone, and he called his daughter the golden bride, he was preparing for the fact that he would easily earn huge money. For Gu Yuan, how did a decent guy knock on the door and ask if anyone was home? Not hearing an answer, Gu Yuan himself opened the door with the key that Li Xiao gave him. The guy entered the house and tried to find a girl named Lisa, he asked if she was here and asked her to come out to him. Gu Yuan realized that he would never receive an answer, so he decided that there was no one, which meant he needed to inspect the housing first. The guy's leg got caught in some clothes that were lying at the entrance, this scared him very much and as a result he stumbled. Things were scattered everywhere so the guy flew straight into a huge pile that lay in the hallway in front of the entrance. The mentor tried to get out of the pile of scattered clothes, but it was difficult for him and he even began to scream. Then, in complete darkness, the guy saw the ears of an animal, which was as dark as the whole house. Gu Yuan was frightened by the small animal and jumped away from it, the animal itself also hissed and its fur stood on end. But it turned out that this was not a terrible beast at all, but a simple black cat who examined the new guest with interest. He immediately noticed the chaos that reigned throughout the house and could not believe that a girl could live here, it was a shock for him. The guy saw light from the back room and heard a girl coughing from there, apparently Lisa was sitting there. Gu Yuan realized where he needed to go and immediately headed towards the door, after which he opened it a little to see what Lisu was doing. Tense, Gu Yuan stuck his eye through a small gap and tried to see something in the darkness. The first thing the guy saw was a huge and scary zombie looking straight at him, Gu Yuan was very scared. Before the boy had time to scream, he noticed a girl playing video games, and the zombie was a simple picture on the TV screen. The girl didn't look very disheveled, the mountains of soda and chips under her feet spoke volumes. Gu Yuan tried to introduce himself and explain that Li Xiao sent him to help her, but Li Su stood up and walked towards the guy. There was a notification on the screen that the game was over and Lisa was standing with a knife in her hands, which she was holding very confidently, as if she wanted to kill the guy. Gu Yuan was also embarrassed by the girl's position and the fact that she was armed with a knife, he did not expect to see such easy money in the house. Lisu's eyes were very difficult to see through her bangs, not a single nerve fluttered on her face and his expression was too serious. Gu Yuan was frightened by the sight of the girl and immediately ran out of the room and slammed the door behind him. The guy thought that it would be impossible to change this girl, which means it was better to take the advance and hit the road. Lisu was left confused by the fact that some guy entered her room, mumbled a few words and ran out of the house. The guy decided for himself that this whole situation and what happened was not like what Li Xiao promised him. Li Xiao said during the deal that Li Su is a very nice girl and has a good character, she just needs to cope with social anxiety. The assistant asked Li Xiao why she chose this guy if she was looking for a woman. The woman replied that people who are willing to wear women's clothing for money are the easiest to control. Gu Yuan ran as fast as he could from Li Su's house, not even noticing where exactly he was running and stopped for a couple of seconds to catch his breath. The guy hid behind a tree and thanked God that he was able to survive and escape from the house of this strange girl. But Gu Yuan apparently didn't calculate everything, and many men in suits appeared around him and gathered next to the guy. The guys in suits gathered in a small circle from which Gu Yuan tried to escape, but he failed. Li Xiao appeared from behind the gloomy guards and asked the guy where he was going to run away. Gu Yuan immediately began to deny this and said that he would not dare to run away from his work. Li Xiao understood that the guy was deceiving her and reached into the diplomat for the papers that she signed with the guy in her office. The girl held the contract at the level of her face and asked Gu Yuan if he was familiar with these pieces of paper. The guy recognized the signed contract and said that he knew perfectly well what was written there. The contract stated stated that Party B undertakes to fulfill the tasks of Party A, and if the task is not met, Party B pays half a million as compensation, and if Party B unilaterally terminates this agreement, 
then it pays 1 million yuan in penalties. After Li Xiao read the terms of the contract, Gu Yuan called her a liar and said that there was nothing like that, because the guy read the contract before signing and remembers it. Li Xiao smiled after Gu Yuan's words and took the contract closer to her eyes. Next, the girl highlighted some lines and stuck the signed contract right in Gu Yuan's face. Indeed, such a clause was written down, but in very small print that even now it was difficult to read. Gu Yuan began to protest, citing that it was impossible to notice, but Li Xiao replied that he simply did not read the contract carefully before signing. Li Xiao asked the guy not to worry, because she had not yet approved or noticed all the violations of the contract. The girl beat the guy and Gu Yuan called her a swindler, and this contract was a complete fraud. The girl approached the guy's face and said that she forgot to clarify something very important. Li Xiao threatened the guy that if something bad happened to her daughter, then they wouldn't even be able to identify his corpse. Gu Yuan already realized who he was dealing with and that there was no way he could get out of this situation. Li Xiao took the guy by the shoulder and said that she was kindly handing over her daughter into his hands and would often visit him to check on the work. Frustrated, Gu Yuan realized that due to control there was no way to escape his responsibilities and he was in deep trouble. However, the guy did not panic he believed that he could cope with any job and would not be afraid of any difficulties. Gu Yuan's stomach growled and he noticed that he hadn't had time to eat a crumb all day, which meant it was time to eat. And the guy came up with the idea that the way to a girl's heart should be through her stomach, which means that all is not lost with Li Su. Gu Yuan returned to the house and decided that he would first get to the delicious food, and then melt the fox's heart. Gu Yuan worked hard in the kitchen to please Li Su's preferences and make friends with her through food. After some time in the kitchen, the guy came to the door to Li Su's room and asked if he could come in. Gu Yuan held a small plate of food and told the girl that there was nothing in the refrigerator, so he whipped up something. Gu Yuan also pointed out to the girl that it was already late, and she was still playing, after which the guy handed over a plate and asked Lisa to have a snack before bed. The guy sat down in front of the girl and introduced himself again, saying that he forgot to do it the first time. The guy smiled heavily and tried to gain Li Su's trust, he said that, on behalf of Li Xiao, he would now temporarily live here. Gu Yuan expressed the hope that they could become friends, but Li Su did not answer him at all but simply looked at his face. Gu Yuan looked shy and waited for Li Su to taste his food. The thought crept into the guy that Li Su might think that he had hidden intentions. Gu Yuan took out a spoon from his pocket to gain Li Su's trust. The guy tried the food he brought and said that the girl could eat it calmly, there was no poison in it. But Li Su didn't seem to care at all and didn't say a word. The guy realized that the girl was too reserved and told her not to be shy about asking him if she needed anything. Gu Yuan was about to leave the room, but he stepped on the cat's tail, which was so treacherously under his feet. The guy's eyes already realized what he had done, and Gu Yuan quickly removed his foot and began to nervously look at the cat. The cat looked annoyed and Gu Yuan thought for a couple of seconds that he had provoked a little evil. But the cat quickly calmed down when Li Su began to meow along with him and Gu Yuan was surprised by such a sudden change in mood. Li Su even started smiling at her cat, her smile looked very sincere. Gu Yuan saw the girl smiling sweetly at the cat and couldn't believe that she could behave like that. But then Li Su turned back to the guy with his stern and frightening gaze, so he took back his words. The guy hurriedly left the room and reminded the girl not to forget to eat, and she could always turn to him for help. Li Su escorted Gu Yuan out of her room for a long time, it was important for her to make sure that he had definitely left. He also decided to try his dishes and picked up the spoon that was left behind. The girl doubted it for a long time, but in the end she still put the spoon with food in her mouth and was pleasantly surprised. Gu Yuan really managed to melt the fox's heart a little, she really liked what the guy prepared. In his diary, Gu Yuan wrote down some information about Li Su, which was very little after the first day, this is the love of cats and delicious food. In the morning, Gu Yuan was lying in bed with the phone, he had not woken up yet and did not even try. But then he jumped up from the pillow as if scalded, because his phone was called and the ringtone really scared him. It was Li Xiao, who was listed in his contacts as the boss, 
Gu Yuan immediately answered the call. The employer immediately attacked the guy with claims that he had been sleeping for too long and should already be on his feet. Gu Yuan asked the boss if she was in her right mind if she called at 6 in the morning and demanded that he stand on his feet. The girl did not appreciate such courage from the guy and asked if he still expected a good salary. Li Xiao told the guy that she forgot to inform him about a small detail in yesterday's conversation. The boss explained that young Master Han was currently studying abroad and his close friend wanted to meet Li Su instead. The frightened guy did not have time to answer anything, and Li Xiao added that she had already agreed to her daughter's meeting with Han. When asked by Gu Yuan when this would be, Li Xiao replied that it was already at the beginning of next month, which means the guy had less time to get Lisa to talk. Gu Yuan tried to explain that Li Xiao was apparently mocking him and did not understand everything that was happening, but it was too late, the woman hung up. The already angry Gu Yuan was irritated by the fact that Li Xiao did not understand at all what was happening to her daughter. For himself, Gu Yuan set a new task for today, first he must clean up the house. Changes in the situation will definitely benefit the fox and the girl will feel better without a mess. Gu Yuan blamed himself for not meeting the girl earlier, because he could have begged for much more money. Under the gaze of the surprised cat, the guy changed into a cleaning lady's costume and prepared to clean up all the chaos in the house. The guy opened the curtains to let at least a little sunlight into the house. The guy imagined what exactly he should do with the house and realized that in order for the girl to feel normal, everything should sparkle and shine. First, he raked through the huge bags of garbage that had accumulated over a long period of time. Next, he swept up dust and dirt from the floor which was disgusting even for a cat to breathe. Then he took all the girl's dirty clothes and threw them into the washing machine, for the first time in a very long time. Finally, after completely cleaning the house, Gu Yuan was able to exhale and appreciate the fruits of his work. Gu Yuan stood over the shiny floor and was glad that his work for the morning was done. He fell onto the sofa and declared with relief that the cleaning was finally finished. But Gu Yuan didn't notice the small guest on the sofa and sat directly on the disgruntled cat. Fluffy was not impressed by this attitude towards himself and he attacked Gu Yuan's face with his claws. The guy survived all the cat's blows and said that his skills certainly impressed him. But Gu Yuan himself considered himself stronger and therefore attacked the disgruntled cat in response. A fight broke out between the cat and Gu Yuan, which could be heard throughout the house. Of course, Lisa couldn't ignore the way her cat meowed and hissed. The guy felt the fox's gaze on him and held the cat in his arms. Fluffy also saw his mistress and, breaking away from Gu Yuan's hands, immediately ran to her. The girl surprisingly covered her eyes with a black cat, as if with a sleeping mask. Lisu did not want to see sunlight, so she left her room with the cat in front of her eyes. The girl was not very good at walking blindly and often tripped or hit furniture. Gu Yuan stood in the girl's way and advised her to go out into the sunlight more. Li Su ignored him and slammed her body against Gu Yuan's shoulders. The guy told the girl that if it was difficult for her to go outside, he could help with it. The girl did not pay attention to him and from the moment they met she never said anything. Gu Yuan said that he would first prepare breakfast to help Fox. After some time, Gu Yuan came into her room and announced that the food was ready. The fox used her hand to show the guy to put the food next to her and leave from here. But Gu Yuan was not going to follow the girl's lead, he warned that she wouldn't be able to eat just like that. In order to have breakfast, a girl must learn one rule she will receive food only in the kitchen. Li Su became even more withdrawn and began to turn her head, showing her disagreement with the rules. But Gu Yuan tried to attract her, he talked about how delicious his food smelled and how delicious it looked. Next, the guy's hand went to the spoon and he tasted his dish right in front of Li Su's eyes. Gu Yuan made a very pleased face and said that today's breakfast was simply delicious. Li Su herself was already salivating, but she had no intention of leaving the room. Gu Yuan said that since the girl was not hungry and would not leave the room, he would not entice her anymore. Gu Yuan sat alone in the kitchen and realized that the deadline for Han's friend to arrive was very close and first he needed to figure out how to get the girl out of the room. But the guy's thoughts were distracted by a hand reaching for a nearby plate of breakfast. Surprised, Gu Yuan saw Li Su leave the room and take the food from the table with her own hands. The guy's eyes showed his joy better than any words or emotions he was finally able to kick Lisa out of the room. But his joy was not destined to last long, because the girl immediately ran away with the plate to her room. Gu Yuan understood that this was not yet the result that was needed, 
but a start had been made. Meanwhile, Han Xiao and Director Zhang were discussing business cooperation between the companies. Han Xiao said that he was still a student, so the company's affairs should not concern him. The director called the guy young and promising, he added that the company should belong to him and he was looking forward to the guy's wedding ceremony. Han Xiao said that the director was probably joking, because the guy himself had not even thought about tying the knot. Director Zhang didn't understand the guy's reaction and asked directly if Han Xiao would marry the daughter from Li Xiu's company. Han Xiao really didn't understand what kind of marriage we were talking about and asked to tell him more about it. Director Zhang until the end believed that the teenager was joking and pointed out that this news had already spread throughout the media. Han Xiao took his phone and decided to personally check all the news that concerns his marriage. The guy was convinced that companies want to build a business empire, which means the rumors about the marriage are true. But Han Xiao himself was even pleased with this, because he expected that the heiress of the Li Xiu company would be just a princess. Li Xiao indignantly asked Gu Yuan if he really needed a housekeeper. The guy immediately crossed his arms and began to assure his boss that a housekeeper was necessary for a better result. Li Xiao asked if she didn't pay the guy enough, implying that he could clean the house himself. Gu Yuan countered that this was not about money or his laziness at all, and that a housekeeper would be a wise investment. The guy explained that because of the speed with which Li Su creates a mess, he has to clean every two days, he also has to cook three times a day, and also clean up after the cat. Li Xiao grabbed the guy's cheek and asked if this shouldn't be part of his basic duties. Gu Yuan managed to escape from the girl's hands and reminded him once again that it's not about money at all. The guy made pained eyes and said that it was all a matter of time, which they were sorely lacking. Li Xiao decided to think about it and said that perhaps there was some meaning in the employee's words. Gu Yuan saw that the girl was thinking and began to ask for help even more and reminded her about the deadlines. Li Xiao instructed Gu Yuan to find the housekeeper and the joyful guy was about to run out of her office. However, the girl stopped him and reminded him that Gu Yuan was still studying, so she took into account the busy schedule for Li Su's transformation, the loving mother took care of the documents and the guy will now study with her daughter. Next, Li Xiao turned her chair around and said that that's all for today and Gu Yuan can be free. Gu Yuan quietly and with a trembling voice reminded him about the insurance, but Li Xiao ordered him to get out of here. On the same day, Hanshi landed at the city airport and found out where his future daughter-in-law lived. The guy did not come alone, but with his assistant, whom he asked not to tell his father anything. Hanshi asked his assistant about the investigation into Li's company, but he said that there was very little material regarding Li Su. The guys headed to their car and Hanshi asked if there was at least a photograph of the girl, but there was none. The assistant wanted to cheer up the guy and assured him that the heiress of the Li Corporation was known for her rich inner world, she was gentle and merciful, in a word, a girl from high society. Hanshi was impressed by these words and ordered his assistant to go to the hotel while he looked for something on the internet. Then something really interested Hanshi in his tablet and he fell into a stupor. It was a vacancy posted by Gu Yuan that required a housekeeper. The guy stopped his driver and said that they were no longer going to any hotel. Hanshi said that he would give the driver the address now and they should go there urgently. Now the guys were sitting opposite each other and Hanshi introduced himself as Han Yen so that Gu Yuan would not find out his real name. Gu Yuan was surprised by the guy's appearance and asked if he was really suitable for this position and could handle it. Gu Yuan still thought that the guy had the wrong job vacancy and explained that he would have to cook, clean the bathroom and toilet, wash clothes, and look after the cat. The guy was dressed in an expensive suit, he had a gold watch on his hands and his whole face said that he had money, but he agreed to the responsibilities. Gu Yuan said that everything is fine, but there is one condition for taking the position. He showed the insurance form and said that all employees were required to take out this insurance. Gu Yuan thought that the stupid son of a rich dad wanted to experience the life of a mortal, but this did not bother him. Gu Yuan, without any questions or prejudices, shook Hanshi's hand and congratulated him on his new position. From the cafe, the guys first went to the fox's house so that Hanshi could get acquainted with his new habitat. Hanshi only counted on one thing, that the daughter of the Li family would be as gentle and beautiful as they say about her. Gu Yuan opened the front door and asked the new employee to prepare well so as not to be scared. Gloomy Lisu was sitting in the kitchen, her eyes were not visible behind her bangs, 
and her hair was very disheveled. The door opened and the girl began to hide her already barely noticeable eyes with her hands from the sun's rays. Hanshi was horrified when he saw the gloomy girl, he was really frightened by Lisu's unkempt appearance. The girl disappeared into her room as soon as she saw the light, and Gu Yuan asked Hanshi not to be shy and to move on. Hanshi asked confusedly who the girl was, he mistook her for a teacher. Gu Yuan immediately explained that this was not a teacher, but the daughter of the Li Lisu family. The guy's words that this gloomy girl, who looks like a half-dead corpse, is the fox, wounded Hanshi right in the heart. Hanshi asked again if this girl was really the same Li Su and Gu Yuan replied that everything was correct. Hanshi took hold of his heart and remembered the words of his assistant, who praised the girl and talked about her merits. Gu Yuan threw a work apron at the guy and said that it was time to get down to business. Frustrated, Hanshi could not even move, and Gu Yuan suggested that he start with cooking. The new worker stood like a pillar, and Gu Yuan was outraged by his inaction and urged him to move towards the kitchen. After a while, Major Hanshi stood at the stove, and Gu Yuan sat at the table and played on the phone. Hanshi, without showing it, asked about the heir to the Han Corporation, who would connect his life with Li Su. Gu Yuan confirmed his guesses, but Hanshi did not want to fully believe it and asked if these could be ridiculous rumors. Gu Yuan replied that this is accurate information, which is why they have to make her into an elegant lady. Gu Yuan also told the guy that his duties also included helping him raise the girl. Gu Yuan happily told the new employee that the two of them should be able to make a real princess out of Li Su. Next, Gu Yuan saw that Hanshi had already finished eating and decided to take a closer look. Gu Yuan began jumping around the door to Li Su's room and alerted her that food was already on the table. Gu Yuan remembered his old method and began to show the plate at the door, luring Lisa. But Li Su was also so ready for such tricks and snatched the plate of food right out of the guy's hands. Upset, Gu Yuan could only watch how the girl deceived him. The guy called this incident another failure and began to think about ways to appease the capricious fox. There was only one idea in Hanshi's thoughts, namely to escape from this house, as quickly as possible and as far as possible. Gu Yuan invited the guy to sit down and eat with him if Li Su did not dare to leave the room. Hanshi warned Gu Yuan in a heavy and dissatisfied voice that he had something important to say. Hanshi took out the contract and placed it neatly on the table next to the plates. Gu Yuan understood what was going on and, putting on his glasses, said that Hanshi had decided to refuse this job and wanted to break the contract. Hanshi confirmed this and said that apparently he was not suitable for this job, in fact, the guy was scared of Lisa. The rich guy realized that he urgently needed to run away from here and give up the marriage with all his might. Gu Yuan told the guy that he needed to read the contract more carefully. Hanshi thought that it was a penalty and assured that he would pay it without any problems. Gu Yuan asked the boy if he was afraid of harming his reputation in the future. Hanshi understood that his real name was not even in the contract and said that he was not afraid at all. Gu Yuan realized that his new employee was determined, so he stood up from the table and asked to follow him. The guy explained that they would now go to the director of the Leisure Corporation to terminate the contract. Gu Yuan explained to the frightened guy that the contract belonged to her. She drew it up with her own hand, and her signature was needed to terminate it. Gu Yuan also warned Hanshi that Li Xiao was the kind of person not to be trifled with. In his head, Hanshi was already imagining the scene that would take place in Li Xiao's office. At first, the girl was outraged by the fact that the new butler decided to abruptly refuse work. Next, the director of the corporation, Li, will instruct you to find out who this guy is and where he came here from. After a short search, she will come to the conclusion that this guy is the same young Master Han and will file a complaint against them. Next, Hanshi's father will apologize to Li Xiao and say that he raised a bad son. Well, then Father Han, as a sign of apology, will transfer his son into the personal hands of the Li family to make him a groom. The father will insist even more on marriage and the young couple will be married that same evening. After thinking about all this, Hanshi said that he was a little angry and would rather stay in this place. Gu Yuan praised the guy and congratulated him on the right decision, after which he asked him to work hard. Frustrated, Hanshi returned to his hotel room and fell with his entire body on the bed. The guy did not want to return to the fox again, everything about the girl frightened him and she did not evoke any positive emotions. The guy imagined their life together and realized that there wouldn't be any smell of abroad in his life. The guy lay with one thought and dream, 
namely to escape as far as possible from this marriage. He decided it was time to sleep and think through all his options tomorrow morning with a fresh head. But then a brilliant idea spontaneously came into his head that if he could not break the contract, he could escape unnoticed. It was already deep night in Lisu's house, not a single light was on and there was complete silence. Hanshi looked towards the living room from his room and looked for the best opportunity to begin his escape. The guy finally decided to leave the room and quietly stomped on his toes towards the door. But he was distracted from escaping by a rustling sound behind him, and Hanshi stopped. It was Li Su who went to the refrigerator in the middle of the night while Gu Yuan was sleeping. Hanshi and Li Su locked eyes and the guy froze in place, realizing that his plan did not work. Li Su didn't say anything, but calmly ate the food from their refrigerator, and Hanshi thought that she wouldn't be upset if he ran away. The door from the house was already very close and Hanshi was heading towards his freedom. The guy already thought that everything had worked when he touched the door handle but did not have time to open it. The fox and Hanshi were frightened by loud steps from Gu Yuan's room, and even then the guy realized that nothing had worked out. Gu Yuan turned on the lights in the house so that the fugitive could be seen better and scare him even more. Yawning Gu Yuan left the room and asked his neighbors why they couldn't sleep at this time. He saw Hanshi standing at the front door, and Li Su managed to run away from the refrigerator. The girl tried to open the door to her room, but it turned out to be locked. It didn't take Gu Yuan long to assess the situation and he quickly understood everything. He sat down on the sofa and told Hanshi that he had not lasted even a day and was already trying to escape. Gu Yuan said that he had predicted this behavior on the part of the new employee and promptly set the alarm at the exit. Gu Yuan also suggested to the fox not to waste her energy in vain because he took the opportunity to lock her room. The guy showed the key and invited the girl to pick it up from him herself. At that moment, Lisu's world seemed to collapse, the girl did not want to stay with the guys in the living room, but she would not be able to get into the room without a key. He felt his victory over the guys, because one was completely crushed by an unsuccessful attempt, and the second was depressed that he would not be able to get into his room. Gu Yuan mockingly invited Hanshi to sit next to him and have a heart-to-heart -heart talk. Hanshi understood that he had no other choice and would have to sit next to Gu Yuan. Gu Yuan expressed dissatisfaction that such a polite worker turned out to be a deserter. The guy also reminded the housekeeper that they should work together as a team and not quit at the very beginning. He threatened that Director Lee had all the data and photos about the guy and he might have problems if she found out about it but Gu Yuan didn't want to hand him over. After Gu Yuan scolded Hanshi, he remembered that he still had Lisu trying to get into her room. The guy said that here the girl is in the position of a mistress and can ask him for anything she wants, in this house her word is law. For the first time since the meeting, Lisu was able to say a few words, the girl, with a trembling voice, asked the guys to leave her house. Hanshi and Gu Yuan were surprised, not by the girl's desire for them to leave, but by the fact that she could talk at all. Gu Yuan was truly happy, he could not even expect such progress in his relationship with Li Su. The guy was glad that Li Su was able to talk to him and said that he was touched to the heart. Gu Yuan explained that they were hired by Li Xiao and could not just leave here, then Li Su asked to at least open her room. The hero had previously promised to fulfill all the girl's wishes, so he said that he would open the door right away. He said that he was here to fulfill Lady Li Su's wishes, but he also had a small request for the girl. The guy took out the documents and announced that starting next week they would study together. Gu Yuan saw the frightened Hanshi and confirmed that he would also study with them. Gu Yuan asked Lisa not to despair so quickly and said that he would take one thing before opening the door. The guy took out one of the valuable figurines from the fox collection and the girl got scared. Gu Yuan took this figurine from the shelf where the girl kept a huge number of the same ones. The guy said that this toy looks like a limited edition and is exclusive of its kind. Next, Gu Yuan took a knife and, putting it to the doll's throat, began to threaten that if the girl did not go to study, he would cut off her head. Gu Yuan said that the hour of his reckoning had come and brought the knife even closer to the doll's throat. Li Su was very scared for the valuable figurine and begged the guy not to do anything bad with it. Gu Yuan told the capricious girl that if she did not agree to go to school with him, he would damage her toy. Hanshi watched Li Su fight and cry for her doll and did not believe that this could really happen. Gu Yuan watched an advertisement for women's lipstick, where a guy applied it to his hand and talked about its color. There was an ad on the internet that encouraged as many buyers as possible to choose lipstick. Gu Yuan and Hanshi already had quite a few cosmetics on their table, 
but the guys kept choosing more and more. Hanshi tried to object to the guy, but Gu Yuan asked him to shut up and continue choosing cosmetics. To begin with, Gu Yuan tried to figure out all the eye colors that were on his table. Hanshi was indignant that they were preparing the girl for regular studies, and Gu Yuan prepared cosmetics as before a fashion show. Gu Yuan explained that Lisu would become a lady and should not be on par with the rest of the disciples. Hanshi repeated the guy's words and decided to also express a couple of his complaints, namely the guy was dissatisfied with the fact that they checked all the cosmetics on his face and now he was painted. Hanshi also explained that in order for Lisu to look like a lady, in addition to makeup, it is also necessary to go through her wardrobe and bring her hair back to normal, Gu Yuan considered this reasonable. Gu Yuan took the comb and began to run it through the girl's tangled hair, causing her pain. Li Su was already screaming at the top of her lungs and asking Gu Yuan to remove his hands from his hair. Han Shi watched in horror as the guy tried to tidy up the girl's hair. Han Shi considered this all too cruel and closed his eyes so as not to see Li Su's suffering. The girl's screams were also heard by a black cat, which was already rushing to help its owner. The cat jumped up on the chair and flew with its paws right at Gu Yuan's face. The fluffy one managed to knock Gu Yuan to the floor and the fox took advantage of this to escape. The girl immediately rushed to the open room and quickly slammed the door. Gu Yuan wiped his face and promised that the day would come when this little devil would obey him. Gu Yuan asked where the girl had fled to and Hanshi said that she had fled to his room. The two of them stood in front of the door and checked whether it was locked from the inside. The door was open and upon entering, they tried to shout to the girl so that she would come out to them. Hanshi expressed concern that Lisu might have jumped out the window, but Gu Yuan reminded them that they lived on the first floor. Gu Yuan also explained that he had set alarms on all the windows to prevent anyone from escaping. Then Gu Yuan heard a slight rustling next to the cabinet and paid attention to it. The guy saw the closet door ajar and tried to quietly swing it completely open. But Lisu was holding on to the door from the inside, Gu Yuan asked her not to resist and to open the door without permission. Gu Yuan realized that standard methods would not help and asked what the girl wanted to achieve. The guy assured her that she would not be able to run away from everyone all her life and hide. Gu Yuan changed his approach to the girl and began to ask her for a truce, while Hanshi simply stood nearby. Apparently the guy remembered the contents of his closet and got a little scared. Hanshi remembered his underwear, which was stored in the closet. Hanshi's underwear, which he remembered, fell onto poor Lisu's head from the top shelf of the closet. Gu Yuan stood and seriously thought about how they would pull the fox out of the closet, but Han Shi was frightened by another thought about his dirty laundry, which he left there. With his screams, the guy told Gu Yuan not to open the closet doors under any circumstances. The sounds of heavy breathing were heard from the closet and both guys immediately paid attention to it. The guys stared at the closet door from which Lisa fell out with her underwear on her head. Gu Yuan examined the fallen girl and found Han Shi's underwear on her head. Then it dawned on the guy why the girl fell out of the closet it was Hanshi's panties that caused this. Gu Yuan looked at Hanshi and stated that he now understood why he did not want to open the closet. Gu Yuan also noticed that Hanshi's underwear could have killed poor Fox, who was hiding in the closet. Gu Yuan began to slap the girl on the cheeks to try to bring her to her senses, but Li Su remained unconscious. Gu Yuan accusingly showed the Hanshi girl and said that his underwear was able to put her in such a state. After some time, Li Su was able to open her eyes and the first thing she saw was Gu Yuan's face. Gu Yuan happily announced that the girl had finally woken up from hiding in the closet. At this moment, Gu Yuan held the girl in his arms until she regained consciousness. Lisa did not appreciate such concern and hit the guy right in the face with her fist. While Gu Yuan felt the full force of the blow, Lisu was able to escape from his hands. The girl, having neutralized Gu Yuan, immediately ran hastily to the other end of the room without anyone having time to stop her. Gu Yuan, meanwhile, fell with his entire body on the floor from Lisu's strong blow. The guy got to his feet and tried to explain to the girl that he just wanted to get her off the floor so that she wouldn't catch a cold. The girl again hid at the edge of the room, and Gu Yuan began to yell at her and scold her that she could not distinguish good deeds from bad. She asked Lisa not to do anything like that and not to scream, the girl wanted everyone to leave her alone. Gu Yuan walked up to the girl and stood right above her body, filled with fear. The guy said that he had been trying to come to an agreement with Li Su for a long time, 
but now he would have to take serious measures. Gu Yuan threatened that Li Xiao would freeze all of Li Su's bank accounts and she would have no money left. Also, to further convince the girl, he asked Hanshi about new games that should be released in the second half of the year. Hanshi understood his friend's hints and confirmed his words, saying that many new products would indeed be released. Gu Yuan also said that an exclusive collection would be released next month, and Hanshi obediently confirmed every word. Gu Yuan tried to put pressure on the girl as best he could and said that because of her behavior, all these delights of life would pass her by. The guy couldn't just leave behind the poor and frightened Li Su and said that without her bill she wouldn't buy anything. But then Gu Yuan saw that the girl was not showing any initiative, which meant she could forget about it. Gu Yuan called Han Shi with him and said that if the girl did not want to cooperate with them, then they had better leave. But then from the lips of the fox I heard her stopping the leaving guys. Apparently the threats that she would not be able to play new games worked, Li Su got back on her feet. Li Su remained with her hair disheveled and standing at her full height, looking towards the guys. A look of determination appeared in her eyes and she assured the boys that she would go to study with them. The guys looked around in surprise and began to look at the girl, feeling their victory. Gu Yuan almost burst into tears with emotion and said that he was now truly happy with Li Su's behavior. The girl raised her hands at the level of her shoulders and Gu Yuan watched this closely. Li Su ran towards the guys and Gu Yuan thought that she wanted to hug them. But Lisa definitely didn't want to hug, she pushed the guys away and quickly opened the door. Gu Yuan realized that he had overestimated the result of his work, but this could not upset him now. Li Su again hid in a dark corner of her room, not wanting to talk to anyone. Li Su, with tears in her eyes, tried to imagine exactly how she would study in a new place. Lisa, as someone suffering from social anxiety, began to imagine how her classmates would call her names and mock her. Tears began to disappear from the girl's eyes when she looked away from herself, the terrible thoughts left her a little. To the side of the girl stood a mirror in which she examined her current appearance. In order to better examine her appearance, Li Su came closer to the mirror. Of course, the girl was not happy with her current appearance, she asked herself the question, does she really look like that now? Li Su was very upset about her appearance, now she felt even more worthless. But the girl's sadness was not destined to last too long, because she heard Gu Yuan's voice. The guy called the girl to come out of her room and come to him. Gu Yuan tried to assure the girl that there was nothing wrong with studying and there was no need to be so afraid of her. The guy also said that he would help the girl in any case and asked her not to worry. To Gu Yuan's surprise, Li Su left the room too quickly, usually he even had to trick her with food. The gloomy girl had scissors in her hands and was looking straight at the two guys. Frightened, Gu Yuan asked what the girl was up to and added that they could discuss everything at any time. Next, Gu Yuan took the scissors from the girl's hands and guessed that she wanted the guy to cut her hair. An aspiring hairdresser sat his first client on a chair and began cutting her hair. After the back hair, he began to work on the bangs, the girl's eyes even fascinated Gu Yuan. When Gu Yuan opened the girl's eyes through her bangs, they simply looked at each other for a while. Hanshi at that moment was watching with great interest what was coming out of Li Su. Li Su was already standing with the result of Gu Yuan's hairdressing work on her head. The guy realized that the haircut was not the best and began to apologize to the girl. Gu Yuan was afraid of the girl's reaction, he understood that she wouldn't like the new hairstyle either. Li Su immediately ran back to Hanshi's room, while Gu Yuan tried to stop her. Upset, Hanshi asked when he could return to his room, and Gu Yuan upset the guy by saying that today he would sleep on the sofa in the living room. Li Su tried to look at herself in the mirror again, hoping that her hairstyle wasn't the worst. She carefully ran her fingers over her face and tried to look at it from all angles. But no matter how hard she tried, her hair looked terrible and the girl herself understood this. Morning had already come and Hanshi began to slowly wake up, the only thing that bothered him was that he was breathing too hard. After some time, the guy finally opened his eyes and began his morning. The cat that was lying on his blanket helped him wake up faster and greatly frightened Hanshi. The frightened guy hid in another corner of the sofa away from the fluffy one, now he seems to be cheerful and full of strength. Gu Yuan was already having breakfast and asked Hanshi to get up quickly, 
reminding him about his studies. Next, Gu Yuan went to the room where Lisa spent the night and reminded her that today was school and asked her to get ready quickly. Gu Yuan also remembered that the girl gave him her word and said that it was rude to break promises. Gu Yuan could no longer bear it and decided to open the door himself to wake up Lisa. The guy opened the door and politely asked if he could come into her room, but what Gu Yuan saw inside plunged him into a real and severe shock. Lisu stood in front of the window, her back turned to the door, the girl was dressed all in black. The boys had already arrived at the school, Hanshi looked simply gorgeous and there was even a smile on his face. Gu Yuan was also in a great mood, what made him most happy was that Lisu agreed to come too. The guys walked past the girls, who immediately noticed them as handsome men. The schoolgirls were discussing the boys, saying that they looked like celebrities, one of the girls recognized Gu Yuan and said that he was from the faculty of finance. But then a gloomy girl caught their eye, covering her face with a mask and walking right behind the guys. It was Li Su, because of her fears she dressed all in black and covered her face with a mask and glasses. Compared to her friends, Li Su looked like a real ghost, which the schoolgirls noticed. In the audience, Han Shi and Gu Yuan were sitting together but Lisa was not visible among them. Gu Yuan wasn't as interested in the lecture as he was in the fact that he was able to get Lisa here, albeit by deception. The guy hoped that life on campus could help make Lisa happy and return her to the real world. Then Gu Yuan heard the pen rolling away and realized that it had fallen from his place. The guy reached under the desk with his hand to find the fallen pen and return it to his desk. But under the table he was frightened by the fox, who hid and played her console during the pairing. Despite this, Gu Yuan still felt happy that his work was progressing. The bell rang in the audience, which meant that the couple had come to an end and it was time to pack their things. But the guy was distracted by a hand that was beckoning him and knocking on his shoulder, Gu Yuan was distracted by these claps. It was a worried Hanshi who whispered to his friend that they were finished because Li Su was nowhere to be found. This news really scared Gu Yuan who seemed to have recently seen the girl under his desk. Gu Yuan lowered himself to inspect the place where the girl was and she really wasn't there. Frightened, Gu Yuan began to search every corner of the audience to find the place where Li Su was hiding. Not finding the girl, Gu Yuan rushed to Han Shi and asked what they should do now. The guy scared Han Shi by saying that Li Su's mother would simply destroy them if they did not find her daughter. Han Shi tried to calm the guy down and asked him not to worry too much, because it's hard to get lost here. Hanshi suggested that his colleagues split up and look for the girl, he would look inside the building, and Gu Yuan would look outside. Meanwhile, Li Su herself hid under a tree behind the sports ground and continued to play the console. A group of hooligans gathered around the girl and asked why she was playing on the phone alone. Li Su sensed danger and began to examine the gathered guys to assess what was happening. The most cocky of them did not want to lag behind the girl and said that it must be boring to play alone. Next, the bully asked if the girl wanted to play a little with them. It turned out that the guys didn't mean anything bad but simply offered to play Mario together on a difficult level. The surprised Li Su did not have time to answer anything, as the guy was already approaching her with his console. But then the conversation was interrupted by Gu Yuan, who demanded to immediately move away from the girl. Gu Yuan looked at Lisa and thought that on the very first day of school she might get into unnecessary trouble. Downtrodden, Li Su just looked at Gu Yuan and couldn't even say anything to him. Gu Yuan immediately attacked the guys with complaints, accusing them of bullying the poor girl. The guys recognized the guy and asked if he was the same Gu Yuan from the faculty of finance. The big man stood in front of the guy and reminded him that Gu Yuan had cheated him with the insurance. Gu Yuan immediately disowned such accusations and asked if it was a deception. The guy explained that if the insurance client dies, he will receive 1 million as compensation. The bully approached Gu Yuan's face and promised that the guy would curse him all his life. The crowd was already expecting a fight with Gu Yuan while he tried to justify himself and Li Su played her game. The foot of one of the hooligans touched the fox's arms, which were holding her console. As a result of a small push, the console fell to the ground, this greatly upset the fox. Frightened Gu Yuan assured the guys that he would help them sort out all the issues. But the hooligans were no longer interested in this, they aimed their fists at Gu Yuan, which means he would no longer be able to escape. Li Su appeared behind the guys, stood up and walked towards Gu Yuan. The bully called Gu Yuan a damn fraud and a deceiver while Li Su sneaked behind him. Gu Yuan tried to warn the offender about the girl behind him and he turned to look at her. Li Su had a very frightening appearance, 
she stood over the guys like a demon in a cloak. Gu Yuan realized that things were bad and tried to negotiate with the girl to avoid consequences. But Li Su was already too angry to listen to the guy, so she swung her leg towards the guys. But her target was not Gu Yuan, but the bully himself, who flew away after the blow. Meanwhile, Han Shi was not looking for a girl at all but was sitting calmly on a bench and flirting with students. The guy looked very cheerful, he explained to the girls about his interests and hobbies. The girls were impressed by the guy who knows about music, one of them called him handsome and smart. Hanshi readily accepted the compliments of the students and said that this was not all his merits. But the same bully whom Lisu sent flying with her foot accidentally flew to Hanshi. Such an unexpected landing broke both the big man himself and the Hanshi he flew into. The guy immediately lost consciousness after coming into contact with the body of a local hooligan. Gu Yuan quietly hid behind a nearby tree and watched what Lisu would do next. The girl stood with her back to the rest of the crowd of bullies, as if she was not afraid of them at all. And Lisu really wasn't afraid of them, rather, the guys themselves felt tension, even when they looked at the girl's back. The gloomy student turned around sharply and greatly frightened the crowd of local hooligans. One of them guessed what could have caused such aggression and handed the girl her console. The guy, in a trembling voice, assured Lisa that everything was fine with the gadget and it was not broken. Gu Yuan first tried to think through what was going on here but he couldn't. Lisa grabbed the console from the guy's hands and the first thing she did was try to turn it on. The console turned out to be working and the joyful Lisa wanted to continue playing games. But she was not destined to return to her games, she was distracted by the conversations of schoolchildren who saw this blow. The crowd of students admired the fact that the girl had just managed to intimidate three bullies. Lisu herself felt all the attention that was focused on her as a result of the small fight. Since the girl suffered from social phobia, due to an excess of attention from people, she lost consciousness. The schoolchildren gathered around her again and asked each other why she lost consciousness. Then Gu Yuan began to break through the crowd, who also saw that the girl had lost consciousness. The guy tried to push away all the schoolchildren and shouted that the girl urgently needed to be taken to the medical center. Gu Yuan put Lisa on his back and said that she was completely exhausted, which means that those guys got it very badly. But then the guy realized that he, too, could be among them. Gu Yuan recalled how many times he manipulated the girl and thanked all the saints for not killing him. Hanshi had already woken up after meeting the hooligans and was asked to get up quickly. The upset guy heard that someone behind the gym was injured and Hanshi already understood who he was talking about. On the second day, legends about the new transferred students were already being made up in the new training place. They say that a new student one fine day was surrounded by dozens of strong hooligans. However, all these hooligans were defeated by the unrivaled abilities of the new girl. And after the fight, she walked off into the sunset, hiding her merits and fame, without even saying her real name. All this was written in the school newspaper that Gu Yuan had in his hands. The guy with a surprised face read and tried to comprehend the contents of the newspaper. Gu Yuan asked Hanshi about the author of this newspaper, and he also added that everything here was too exaggerated. Hanshi asked his comrade if he really wanted to know the truth, but their conversation was interrupted by unexpected guests. These were the same beaten hooligans who, upon entering the house, immediately began to look for someone with their eyes. Frightened Gu Yuan thought that they had come for him and asked his friends how they found him. Gu Yuan realized that there was nowhere to run, so he approached the hooligans and asked if they had any questions for him. But the bullies were not interested in Gu Yuan, so they pushed him away and continued into the house. The main bully paid attention to what he was looking for, namely the fox playing his video game. The girl was busy playing her games until the shadow of the bully hovered over her. Lisu raised her eyes up to see who was trying to disturb her now. It was the same bully from school whom she had sent flying with her kick. The girl was frightened by his beaten face and she began to tremble and worry surrounded by bullies. Gu Yuan understood what was going on now and suggested that the guys settle everything by talking and not pay attention to the little girl. But the bully himself didn't pay attention to what Hanshi and Gu Yuan were saying, he was more interested in Lisa. Unexpectedly for everyone, the bully bowed to the girl and asked to become Lisu's younger brothers for him and his friends. Hanshi and Gu Yuan were simply shocked by the bully's words, because they expected that they had come for payback. All the bullies obediently bowed down in front of the girl, which stunned everyone in the room. The girl herself also did not fully understand what to answer, 
she also thought that this could be a prank. The bully began to knead the girl's shoulders and said that he could give her a massage if she was too tired from her games. Gu Yuan shouted to the hooligans to stop and not touch the poor girl. The guy was already preparing to go towards Li Su, but another hooligan blocked his way. The guy explained to Gu Yuan that to meet Mrs. Li, you need to make an appointment in advance. Hanshi heard all this and realized that the story was taking a completely different turn. Meanwhile, on the night of the same day, Gu Yuan begged Lisa to think carefully about his proposal. The guy sucked up to Fox and said that she could ask all her new friends to take out insurance with him. Gu Yuan sat in the corner of the room and was dying of boredom after the arrival of Li Su's new friends. Meanwhile, school friends surrounded the girl and watched her play. One of the guys called Lisa very cool due to the fact that she completes all levels on a high difficulty level. Next, the main bully lined up his friends and ordered them to prepare to help the fox. All the guys on the team reached into their pockets for consoles to help fox. Then each of them started the game and the leader ordered them all to start. Tired Li Su stood up and put her console in her pocket, away from the eyes of the guests. The bullies tried to find out what Miss Lee would order them to do now, but her face showed disinterest in it. The girl did not answer the hooligans, Lisu simply walked past them with a thoughtful face. The bully tried to stop Lisa, but Gu Yuan explained that it was better to leave her behind because she was going to the toilet. One of the hooligans thought about the guy's words and looked with great interest towards Lisu. The guy ordered all the brothers to get ready and line up. The hooligans gathered in a column and pushed aside everyone who was in their way, they asked to clear the way for Ms. Lee. The guys made a small corridor from their bodies and invited the fox to walk along it. This whole situation was a little stressful for Fox herself, the extra care from her new friends even frightened the girl. The girl, with trembling knees and fear in her heart, went to the restroom. Following her wave, the most cocky of the hooligans wished her luck, and Lisa herself imagined how he had chained her hands with his care. Gu Yuan told the guys that they had completely gone crazy and the bully's expression changed to serious. The guy was convinced that Lisu had left and told Gu Yuan that he had put up with him for too long. Gu Yuan told the guys that they were trying in vain and asked why they communicate with Lisu, is it because she plays games well and the guys help her? Gu Yuan told the guys that Lisu just went to the toilet, and they created some kind of circus and commotion. The bully said that maybe they were going too far, then he asked what Mrs. Lee needs. Gu Yuan replied that she was not satisfied with her hair, after the new haircut the girl always wears a hat. Gu Yuan tried to hint at a haircut, but the guy was already holding scissors in his hands. Gu Yuan saw the bully walking towards the girl and asking if he could really fix something. Before Gu Yuan could finish speaking, Lisu already had a new haircut that suited her face very well. Surprised, Gu Yuan tried to figure out how the school bully managed to put the girl's cropped and ugly hair in order. The bully tried to seem cooler and said that, to be honest, he had an interesting last name, but he didn't have time to finish. Gu Yuan interrupted the guy and pointed his finger at the guest, after which he said that his name was Tony. Surprised, Tony asked the guy how he could know this, and Gu Yuan replied that he simply pointed his finger at the sky. The guests had already left, Hanshi and Gu Yuan were lying with their heads on the table, and Li Su was playing with her console. Hanshi expressed dissatisfaction that studying took so much energy from him, and Gu Yuan asked what the guy did before. After talking with Hanshi, Gu Yuan suddenly remembered something and headed towards the fox. The guy sat down and moved closer to the girl to kindly ask her for something. The guy suggested to the girl that she ask Tony to buy something important. And this important thing was Gu Yuan's insurance, which he tried to sell to everyone. Hanshi heard the conversation and suggested that Gu Yuan stop doing this nonsense. Gu Yuan said that his friend was wrong and assured that his insurance company would be successful next month. And then an interesting thought popped into the guy's head. He remembered what they asked him to do. Li Xiao warned him about the arrival of Mr. Han's friend, who wants to look at the girl. Out of fear, Gu Yuan jumped sharply and threw the half-sleeping Hanshi off the chair. Hanshi scratched his head and asked the guy what should await them in the next month. Gu Yuan began to walk around the room and talk about how he was finished, and Hanshi tried to find out what was bothering his friend. Meanwhile, Hanshi's friend, whose name was Zhou Tianqing, admired his beauty in the car after the concert. The guy remembered that next month he would need to go and replace his friend. Tian Qing explained to the driver that Hanshi had a lot of brides recently and he should check everything personally for his friend. The driver was annoyed by the guy's constant glance at the phone, 
and Tian Qing explained that there were a lot of interesting things there. Han Shi began to sneeze and guessed that his friend Tian Qing was remembering him and the trip to Lisu. Han Shi also realized that his friend could be an excellent reason to cancel the wedding. Since Tony helped Fox with her hair, she didn't even touch her hair, and she didn't change her clothes, the girl continued to sit on the sofa and play her games. While the girl was busy with her console, a shadow hung over her, covering half of her face. Li Su felt that someone was standing over her and decided to turn her head to make sure of it. It was Gu Yuan who hovered above the girl and watched her play games. The guy's strange look frightened Lisa greatly and she even turned pale with fear. Out of surprise, the girl hit Gu Yuan on the cheek with her hand and he retreated a couple of meters. Han Shi didn't even try to look in the direction of Gu Yuan and Li Su, because he already understood that the guy wouldn't succeed. The blonde asked his friend what he was talking about and how he was trying to prepare the girl for the meeting. Gu Yuan sadly reminded that the groom's friend was coming soon. Next, Gu Yuan pointed to Lisa, who continued to lie on the sofa, and said that her appearance was simply terrifying and they didn't have much time. Gu Yuan fell to his knees in front of the girl and asked Lisa to have mercy on him. The guy begged the girl to work together on her appearance and behavior. But Li Su had no intention of cooperating and quickly ran out of the room. Gu Yuan invited Han Shi to look at the girl and shouted in annoyance that they would end. Han Shi said with a small smile that rushing will not help matters and you just need to go with the flow. Gu Yuan tried to convey to Han Shi by shouting that he did not understand that the guest was a real celebrity. And if he is famous, then in any case the high-flying bird will not even look at the fox. Gu Yuan was already imagining how Li Xiao would quietly devour him and was anticipating his end. Gu Yuan said that the guys would not live even a month, and Han Shi pretended to sympathize with the guy and asked him not to worry. Gu Yuan realized that his friend would not give any practical advice and he needed to act right now, so he grabbed his hand. Right in the middle of the night, Gu Yuan dragged his friend out of the house, and Han Shi tried to find out what the guy was up to. After a couple of minutes, the guys reached some store with women's clothing. Gu Yuan stood and selected dresses, skirts and blouses that might suit Fox. Han Shi was hinting that it was useless because Gu Yuan was again taking beautiful clothes that Li Su would never wear. Han Shi thought that Li Su's problem lies at the very root, clothes alone cannot change a girl. Han Shi then remembered that if his friend Zhou Tianqing showed up, it could be a problem. Han Shi realized that the guy's visit would be even worse than anyone could have expected, because Tian Qing generally does not know how to keep his mouth shut. The guy remembered how they were in the director's office, where she read out their passes. Han Shi tried to assure the principal that they had not missed school, but was interrupted by his friend. Tian Qing said with a sneer that they couldn't even think of skipping classes. The frightened Han Shi knew that his friend had set them up badly right now. The director said that the boys missed class and asked where they were at that moment. Han Shi again did not let Tian Qing say everything, who let slip that they definitely would not say that they were secretly surfing the internet. The director understood everything, and a satisfied Tian Qing looked at his friend, who understood that they were now greatly misled by the guy's words. Han Shi pondered what might happen if his friend found out that he had returned home. To begin with, Tian Qing will ask about how Han Shi ended up here, which will reveal him to Gu Yuan and Li Su. Next, the guy will assure Han Shi that he will not tell his father about returning to his homeland. After all this, Tian Qing will still blab to Han Sr. that Han Shi is in his homeland. At first, the father will be indignant, but then he will load Han Shi with work in a company that requires his presence. And after all this, Han Sr. will remember the engagement and will do everything to have a quick wedding. This situation, of course, did not suit Han Shi himself, who is trying to do everything to break off the engagement. Gu Yuan showed the dress he had chosen and asked Han Shi if the celebrity would like it. The girl consultant said that Gu Yuan had a keen eye and added that this dress was from a new collection. The guy asked if there was the same model, only smaller in size so that it would fit the fox exactly? Han Shi approached Gu Yuan and noted that this dress should suit the fox. The girl said that of course they have smaller sizes and asked if the guy wanted to buy this dress for the girl. Gu Yuan exhaled deeply and said that this dress was not for his girlfriend at all. The guy pointed his fingers in his direction and said that he was choosing a dress for himself. The girl was a little surprised, but could not stop the client so she said that she would look now. The embarrassed girl ran away from the guys, 
and Gu Yuan's words left Hanshi with many questions. Hanshi asked his comrade in a whisper what he had arranged and planned here. Gu Yuan said that Mrs. Li is not yet ready for the meeting, which means he can help her and provide backup while they hide her. Hanshi thought that the guy was a little off his head, but it was to his advantage, he also offered to hide him. Gu Yuan tried to find out why, and Hanshi called it strange that when two young people, especially a guy and a girl, live together, it could ruin Li Su's reputation. Gu Yuan thought that the guy's words actually made sense, and Han Shi was happy that he could solve the problem. The consultant returned with the dress and invited the guy to try it on to make sure of the size. The guy thanked the girl and added that she should not go far from them. Gu Yuan pointed his finger at Han Shi and asked the girl to pick something similar for him. The frightened Han Shi did not expect that he would have to dress up in women's clothing. Gu Yuan once again told the girl to pick up a dress for Han Shi and pointed his finger at him again. Han Shi could not come to terms with this, he thought that he would be asked to leave home for a while or hide in the basement, but he was not ready to put on women's clothes. In Hanshi's eyes, Gu Yuan looked like a real demon who was trying to destroy him. Hanshi and his friend Tian Qing communicated by correspondence and the groom insisted that if his friend did not like the bride, he should notify his father about it. Tian Qing asked his friend to relax and leave all the wedding matters to him while he studied abroad. Exhausted, Han Shi threw the phone aside and tried to accept his fate. The guy never thought that Gu Yuan would come up with such a crazy idea. But still, there was nothing left to do, especially since Han Shi himself did not want to lose face in front of his family. Reluctantly, the guy examined his women's clothing and asked himself the question, why is he obliged to wear this? Dissatisfied, Hanshi hit himself on the cheeks and dissuaded him from the idea of dressing up as a girl. Hanshi tried to find other ways to hide his identity and came up with the idea of having Tian Qing reveal the fake bride. The guy imagined how Tian Qing would be unhappy that he saw a fake instead of a real daughter-in-law. He also imagined Gu Yuan apologizing to his friend for his idea. He will see the real bride who does not at all correspond to the rumors about herself. Tian Qing will insist that his friend is an elegant flower, young and talented, and will not be able to marry such a girl. Han Shi decided for himself that he needed to make Tian Qing see his real bride. It was late at night and everyone in the dark house was already asleep, only Han Shi was thinking about his plans on how to break off the engagement. The guy peered into the door gap for a long time to make sure there was no one in the living room. Han Shi remembered that usually at this time the lady and princess went out for their night snack. And so it turned out that Li Su was looking for something in the refrigerators and eating ready-made, frozen food. Han Shi quietly crept up to the fox, who continued her nightly feast from the refrigerator. The guy stood right behind the unsuspecting girl and began to get ready. He called the girl and Lisa was very frightened by the guy's voice at midnight, because she thought that everyone was sleeping. Hanshi wanted to say something about tomorrow's meeting, but the girl hurriedly ran away. Gu Yuan also came out of his room with papers in his hands and saw the fox running. But the girl herself didn't notice the guy, so she crashed into him, all the pieces of paper scattered to the sides. Gu Yuan felt the girl slam her head directly into his chest. The guys fell and the girl grabbed the guy with fear, they continued to lie in an embrace. Li Su realized that she had hit someone on the way and decided to look Gu Yuan in the face. Then she got even more scared and ran straight over the guy's body and headed to her room. Gu Yuan tried to stop the girl but he failed and the door slammed shut. Gu Yuan thought that it was strange that the girl bumped into him and also stepped on his body. But this was no longer so important, because Gu Yuan saw Han Shi in the middle of the room. The guy asked his friend what he was doing here at midnight, realizing that Han Shi was up to something. Han Shi couldn't find anything smarter than to say that he went to the toilet, and he also decided to ask in response why Gu Yuan wasn't sleeping. Han Shi noticed pieces of paper under his feet that scattered from the guy's hands. The blonde began to examine one of them and asked Gu Yuan what it was and why he needed it. On the paper was an advertisement for Gu Yuan's insurance, which he is trying to sell to everyone. Gu Yuan explained that an idea came to his mind, say seeing fans, paparazzi and other people are now violent, which means the star's physical health is at risk. That is why Gu Yuan will post advertisements in the most prominent places in the living room. And tomorrow, as soon as celebrities see this insurance offer, they will melt. The guest will not be able to resist, and they will provide him with their careful attention, warmth and care, 
which is why he will buy insurance. Han Shi realized that Gu Yuan's idea was complete nonsense and it was in vain that he listened to all this before going to bed. The blonde wished his friend good luck in selling insurance and said that he was going to bed. But Gu Yuan was not going to let the guy go so quickly and blocked his passage with his hand. Gu Yuan noticed that Han Shi never admitted why he left the room at midnight. Han Shi tried to lie that he went to the toilet, but Gu Yuan's face showed that he didn't believe it. Han Shi said again that he went to the toilet and added that it was true and he was not lying. Gu Yuan scratched his chin and said that he would remind his colleague something. Gu Yuan pointed to the toilet room and said that the restroom was on the other side. Han Shi realized that he had been caught in a lie, but still did not stop, he said that he simply forgot which way the toilet was. The next morning came and a red sports car parked in front of the house. The first step out of the car was made by a pair of chic shoes that were on the feet of a handsome guy. This handsome guy was Han Shi's friend Tian Qing, who came to look at the bride. Tian Qing looked towards the door and expected someone to meet him from the road. The guy remained in place, and the doors began to open quietly while Tian Qing looked around. The sunlight blinded the guy's eyes a little and he could hardly see who was meeting him. The only thing Tian Qing saw was the silhouette of a girl walking straight towards him. The pretty blonde asked Mr. Zhou to come through and follow her. The girl pointed to the entrance, and Tian Qing walked by, suspecting something. Zhou Tian Qing decided to pay attention to the girl and stood closer to her to examine her. The guy was about to ask who the girl was, suggesting that she might be Li Su. Han Shi, dressed as a girl, was worried that he would not be recognized and asked the guy in a female voice how he could help him. Tian Qing asked if the girl was from the Li family, and Han Shi relaxed, realizing that he was not recognized. Entering the room, he saw Gu Yuan dressed as a girl in the darkness, who greeted him. The girl got up from the sofa as soon as the guest entered the house and headed towards him. The woman's gait performed by Gu Yuan was perfect, it was even impossible to find fault with anything. The girl extended her hand to the guy and said that her name was Li Su, she was the heiress of the Li family. Frightened Tian Qing first examined the girl for a long time and wanted to ask again if she was really Lisa. Most of all, the guy was embarrassed by the girl's voice which seemed too rude to him. Tian Qing sat down opposite the girls and deathly silence hung over them, no one said a word. The guy examined his friend's potential bride and tried to give her his assessment. He saw the girl's ordinary appearance, boring character, unpleasant voice and ordinary height, for him the girl did not stand out in any way. Tian Qin thought that all the talk around that same lady from the Li family turned out to be false. The guy looked at the girl, not realizing that she was a guy in disguise and thought that she was not suitable for his friend Hanshi. The Tian Qin girl was more interested in the leaflets that Gu Yuan left on the table. It was an advertisement for his insurance, one of which Tian Qin even picked up to read. For Gu Yuan himself, this was a great sign, because this is exactly how he planned everything. Joyful Gu Yuan understood that his plan with insurance had worked and next month he would be able to close the sales plan. While the celebrity was looking through the flyers, the guys dressed as girls just looked at him. Han Shi was worried that his friend would find out everything and then there would be bad consequences. Tian Qin carefully read the insurance advertisement without saying a word to the girls. The guy closed his eyes and put the leaflet aside while the girls looked at him. Gu Yuan enthusiastically asked if he was interested in the insurance offer, but the guy replied that he was not. This upset Gu Yuan, and Tian Qin began to attack the disguised Han Shi, he turned to him. Tian Qin noticed that the girl looked very familiar to him and asked her who she was. Han Shi didn't know how to respond, so he just looked at his friend awkwardly. Gu Yuan answered for him, who lied that this was Xiao Yan, a maid of their family, who was nothing unusual. Han Shi was glad that he would not have to say anything and simply nodded his head. Tian Qin didn't really trust the girl's words and still continued to suspect something. Gu Yuan commanded Han Shi to go to the kitchen and prepare food for the guest. Han Shi followed Gu Yuan's request to the kitchen, happy that he would no longer have to look at Tian Qin. But the guy himself was tense, he was afraid that they might somehow screw up and his friend would reveal their plan. Meanwhile, the real Lisu was sitting in her room playing video games. The girl realized that she was hungry and now wanted to eat, but there was nothing in her room. Lisu got to her feet and prepared to go to the kitchen for food, although she herself did not want to leave the room. The girl slowly and displeasedly stomped towards the door to find food for herself. Gu Yuan decided to start a conversation and said on behalf of Lisu that she did not expect that Mr. 
Han's friend would be a famous star. The girl drank tea and said that they could become friends after the wedding. To Gu Yuan's great horror, he saw behind Tianqin the Rayal fox leaving the room. Gu Yuan spat out all the tea he had managed to put into his mouth out of surprise and shock. All the tea spilled on the guest and the girl tried to fix everything and said that she didn't do it on purpose. Gu Yuan saw Mrs. Li heading to the kitchen and didn't know what to do. Li Su was already standing in front of the refrigerator but Gu Yuan still couldn't understand why she came out. Tian Qin realized that something interesting was happening behind him, so he decided to turn there. But Gu Yuan shouted and ordered the guy not to turn around, and he obediently stopped. Next, Gu Yuan, wearing a woman's dress, made a cute face and tried to hush up everything that happened. Li Su stood in front of the refrigerator and chose food to solve her hunger problems. Frightened Tian Qin asked the girl why he shouldn't turn around. So far, Gu Yuan has not found a clear explanation and just started mumbling. But then an idea struck him and he told the guy that their maid was changing clothes there. Surprised Tian Qin could not believe that the maid was changing clothes right behind the guest's back and asked, is she so free of complexes? Gu Yuan laughed and said that she is like that, she likes to have fun. The guy dressed as a fox lied that one day their maid started dancing right in front of the guests. Then Hanshi came with good news and said that everything was ready and Li Su and the guest could start eating. Hanshi invited Mr. Zhou to come to the food table and have a snack after the journey. Hanshi stared intently towards Li Su's room, expecting her to come out right now. The guy did not prepare anything for the girl all day so that she would go out during the guest's visit. Nothing happened yet but Hanshi thought that his plan would work, he just had to wait. On the table lay a simple fast food lunch, with chicken, potatoes and soda water. Tian Qin said that their dinner looked very simple, and the fake Li Su replied that everything should be like that. The indignant Gu Yuan looked towards Hanshi and asked him what he was doing, because this was their mistress's food. Meanwhile, in Li Su's room, the girl still wanted to eat and was hungry. But then she smelled fast food from the kitchen and it brought her to her feet. Li Su realized that this was the fried chicken that she adored so much. As if under hypnosis, Li Su followed the smell of chicken to the door of her room. But she failed to reach her goal. The girl stepped on a bottle with her foot. After an unsuccessful encounter with a bottle, the careless Li Su slipped and hit the floor hard. The sound of the girl falling was heard even in the kitchen and the guest asked what it was, to which he received the answer that it was just a cat. Gu Yuan said that apparently the cat just dropped something and there is nothing to worry about. The fake Li Su went to check and told the guys to wait for her in the kitchen while she looked for the cat. Tian Qin took one of the chicken legs and turned his attention to Han Shi, who was standing in the corner. The guest asked the maid if she wanted to eat with him, but she refused. Tian Qin said that the maid was actually a guy and offered to eat chicken, and also asked her to never dress up as a girl again. Li Su's room, as always, remained a terrible mess, where Gu Yuan entered. The guy tried to find the girl and asked if there was anyone else in the room to hear her voice. And then the hand of Li Su, who was lying on the floor in despair, reached out to his leg. The guy looked in bewilderment at the lying girl and tried to understand what she wanted from him. The starving fox asked for food, her appearance was more reminiscent of a zombie than a beautiful lady. This appearance greatly frightened Gu Yuan, who even turned pale when he looked at the girl. Li Su pulled the guy by the hand and asked him to bring food as quickly as possible. The girl already wanted to scream at the top of her lungs that she wanted to eat, but Gu Yuan did not allow her to do so. The guy covered the girl's mouth with his hand and asked her to be quiet while the guests were at home. Gu Yuan was getting closer to the girl's face and asked her not to scream but to calm down. He moved as close as possible to her face and put his finger to her lips so that she could understand him. But Li Su was dissatisfied with this attitude towards herself and hit the guy with an uppercut. Meanwhile, in the kitchen, there was an awkward pause in the conversation between Tian Qin and Han Shi after the guest's words. Han Shi already thought that this was the end and he would have to confess everything to his friend. A frightened Han Shi heard his friend fall after being hit by Li Su in the basement. The maid said that apparently something had happened and she should check what the mistress was doing. Tian Qin said that the lady could handle the cat herself and said that he was interested in the story. Why does a guy dress up as a girl? Han Shi immediately said that he had no goal to deceive anyone or convince anyone of anything. Tian Qin interrupted the guy and asked if he was Madame Li's secret boyfriend. Meanwhile, in Li Su's room, 
Gu Yuan stood in front of the door and told the girl that she would not pass through him. The hungry Li Su was almost the most terrible creature and said that the guy would not be able to come between her and the food. Gu Yuan grabbed Mrs. Li by the waist and told her that she should not leave the room now. Gu Yuan felt that Li Su began to back away and tried to understand what this meant. The guy heard his tummy growling and asked the girl if she was really hungry. Gu Yuan promised Fox that if she listened to him, he would bring her food. Hearing this, Li Su lowered her ardor and returned her hands to the level of her hips. The girl calmed down and began to stand still, and Gu Yuan called her smart. The guy removed his hands from the girl's stomach when he realized that she was no longer resisting. Gu Yuan asked Lisa to wait for him for ten minutes and then he would return with food. Encouraged, Li Su said that she would have no problem waiting for the guy with food in her room. Tian Qin was already concocting Mrs. Li Su's secret affair with her boyfriend, disguised as a maid. In his story, Two loving hearts cannot get married because of evil company directors. Two lovers are forced into hiding due to fictitious marriages that benefit business. Tian Qin told the maid that he would definitely help them in the name of love, because this is the most touching thing he has seen lately, he will tell them to cancel the marriage contract. Han Shi was once again convinced that his friend was a complete fool, but now it didn't matter, because such an approach solved his problem. The door to the kitchen creaked and Gu Yuan entered promising the fox to bring chicken from the kitchen. Tian Qin asked how things were with the kitten, was the girl able to sort everything out? The fake Li Su said that everything was normal and lied that on the way back she stopped in the toilet. Tian Qin pointed his finger to the side and asked if the toilet was there and Gu Yuan replied that it was there, by the way, they recently refinished the restroom. Tian Qin said that he would now go and look at the decoration in the toilet with his own eyes. The uncomprehending Gu Yuan asked the guy what he just said and what he meant. Tian Qin assured the girl not to worry and added that he would help them with their problems. Gu Yuan was still confused about what kind of problems Tian Qin was referring to. Meanwhile, Li Su in her room continued to dream of fried chicken and waited for Gu Yuan. The girl has already started drawing chicken legs on the floor from the dust from hunger. Surprised, Tian Qin made the wrong room and instead of the toilet he went to see the fox, which was very surprising. Tian Qin found the starving fox kneeling and waiting for food from Gu Yuan. The guys were already standing behind and Gu Yuan realized that now everything was definitely not going according to plan and he had big problems. Han Shi at this time was happy that everything worked for him, and Gu Yuan was already expecting his end. Gu Yuan tried to justify himself to the guest and said that this was not at all what he was thinking about. Tian Qin looked at the girl with apprehension and could not find the right words to describe her. Surprisingly, Tian Qin saw the best in the girl and said that Li Su looked just beautiful. Tian Qin asked Gu Yuan, could this beautiful girl be the real Li Su? Gu Yuan tried to refute this but Han Shi called the real fox madam and went to her. The guy took the girl by the shoulders and lifted her to her feet, asking why she was on the floor and if she was okay. Han Shi whispered in the girl's ear that if she married for convenience to a representative of the Han family, her life would be destroyed. Han Shi also added that now is just the perfect opportunity to break off the engagement. Tian Qin realized that the fake Li Su was a liar, and she denied everything and said that her maid simply had problems with her head and was saying all sorts of nonsense. The guy did not listen to Gu Yuan and pointed his finger at his head, saying that he had figured out all his plans. Then Fox began to speak, she turned to Tian Qin, recognizing him as a friend of Mr. Han. The girl was full of cunning and greeted the guest, gritting her teeth. The beauty, as if for the first time in her life, took a feminine pose and introduced herself. The girl said that she had been pretending for a long time, but Tian Qin managed to figure out her plans. Everyone in the room stood in suspense, Gu Yuan did not fully understand how he could correct the situation. Gu Yuan tried to justify himself again, too many times to count, but he couldn't say anything coherent. Li Su showed her index finger and pointed it towards Gu Yuan. The girl put her finger to the guy's lips and asked him to be silent so that she could decide everything herself. Gu Yuan was left in shock, he had never heard so many words from Li Su in his life, as if the girl had changed in one day. Li Su once again greeted the guest and asked him to feel at home. Tian Qin looked at the girl with loving eyes and willingly extended his hand in response. Tian Qin and Li Su sat in the living room while Han Shi and Gu Yuan spied on from behind the wall. Gu Yuan tried to find out from his comrade what exactly he said to the girl and whether they would have problems, 
but Hanshi said that there was nothing special. Li Su explained that her family received Tian Qin a little tactlessly and added that she hoped that the guy was amused by this performance. Tian Qin said that, as mentioned earlier, everything about Miss Li is beautiful, her character, her appearance, for a guy she was like an angel. Tian Qin also said that the girl's assistants were not worthy of even the little finger of her beauty, Li Su willingly accepted compliments. Gu Yuan began to be indignant that Tian Qin considers his female appearance ugly, the guy himself is sure that he is a hundred times better than Li Su. Tian Qin asked the main question that interested him, why did the lady pretend to be an assistant? Lisa tried to find something to answer, but her gaze was distracted by something much more interesting. It was a fried chicken that lay appetizingly nearby and seemed to shine and look at the girl in response. The girl began to drool at the sight of the chicken, she had not eaten for a long time, and here was her favorite food right on the table. Everyone in the room was surprised by the girl's gaze, and Gu Yuan realized that Li Su might now lose her temper. Han Shi whispered to the fox that this was her last chance to do what she had planned. The girl listened to the guy's words and tried to restrain herself from attacking the food. The girl coughed, and Tian Qin noticed that her mood had changed greatly. Li Su apologized and said with complete annoyance that there was no way she could do this. The girl got up from the sofa and headed towards Tian Qin, speaking about her request. The girl said that she wanted to ask the guy about an important request for her and hoped that he would not be indifferent. Tianqin's heart moved and he looked straight into the fox's eyes and asked what exactly the girl's request was. Gu Yuan tried to find out from Hanshi what kind of chance they were talking about and what they were planning together with Li Su. Meanwhile, the girl herself was already in front of the box with the chicken and was trying to feel one of the legs with her hand. Li Su brought her hands even closer and was almost able to grab the chicken. Now her hand was already at the goal and the girl was pleased with the fact that she was able to take her favorite chicken. Tian Qin looked at Lisa fanatically, her appearance really impressed the guy, he considered such an image real and beautiful. Tian Qin obediently waited for the girl to tell him about her request and continued to admire her beauty. Li Su, Putting her hand on her heart, said that she was asking the guy to cancel the fictitious marriage contract with Mr. Han. After the girl said that she was asking for help with terminating the marriage contract, everyone was shocked. Everyone was disappointed except Hanshi, who admired the girl, believing that she did everything right. After her words, Li Su sank down closer to her chicken, and Tian Qin remained with his thoughts. Li Su turned around and was about to taste her chicken but she was distracted by Tian Qin. The guest asked why the girl did not want to connect her life with Mr. Han, she had to tear herself away from the chicken. The nervous girl was thinking about how to convince the guest, so she first calculated everything well and only then answered. Li Su explained that her life was completely determined by her family from the very beginning. Since childhood, the girl was forced to study etiquette, although Lisa herself did not want this. Next, she was taught to properly come into contact with a variety of people not at her request. And now they are trying to marry poor Fox against her will, but the girl does not want such a life, she wants to choose her own destiny. Gu Yuan understood why Li Su was so unhappy after learning about her position in all this. The guy also guessed that this was all the work of Li Xiao, who tried to marry the girl off without asking her. The guy's hands began to clap Lisa on the shoulders, trying to calm the poor girl and cheer her up. Tian Qin grabbed the girl by the shoulders and said that she had a very difficult fate, and assured her that he would definitely help her with all her problems. While Tian Qin was calming Lisa, the desired chicken fell out of her hands and onto the floor. The girl turned pale from losing the chicken, and Tian Qin falsely thought that it was all because of feelings. Tian Qin turned to the maids and said that he had figured everything out and would tell his uncle to terminate the marriage contract. Han Shi was already celebrating his victory, and Gu Yuan tried to explain to Tian Qin that these were hasty conclusions. Li Su finally got to the chicken again and couldn't stop admiring the whole look of it. On the second try, she took the chicken in her hands and tried to bite it, but even then she failed to do so. There was a knock on the door and the chicken leg treacherously fell out of Li Su's hands again. Surprised, Gu Yuan looked at the door and asked himself who else could come today? Gu Yuan stood in front of the door and it opened with a creak, the guy himself had not yet noticed who had come to them. Gu Yuan first thought that some child had come to them, because the guy was very short. The new guest did not come alone, but with his security guards, 
of which there were a lot. The bodyguards entered the house and obediently lined up so that their boss could pass through safely. The guy was indeed very short and it was not surprising that Gu Yuan mistook him for a child. Confused, Gu Yuan tried to find out from the unexpected guest who he was and why he came. The arrogant guy didn't even pay attention to Gu Yuan and simply ran past him. The guy went to the fox and said that he was more than sure that this was the heiress of the Li family. The mysterious guy introduced himself, his name is Bai Jing and he works as an agent of Tianqin. Bai Jing bowed to the girl and apologized for any possible inconvenience that Tianqin could provide. The agent also explained that Tianqin is a public figure and he needs to protect his image, so he asked the girl to keep today's meeting a secret. And then the agent saw his client and immediately drew attention to the frightened Tianqin. Tianqin knelt down and with sweet eyes tried to persuade his agent not to do anything. Bai Jing was decisive and ordered his body bodyguards to drag the guy home. Tian Qin asked to be released and assured that his agent had misunderstood everything, but Bai Jing had no intention of listening to him and only added that the guy had done a lot of things today. Surprised, Han Shi and Gu Yuan no longer understood what was happening and what to expect next. Li Su was finally able to reach out to her favorite chicken again, the girl was already making her third attempt. But even now she was interrupted, Bai Jing stood over Li Su and asked for forgiveness turning to her. The guy stood right above the girl's soul and blurted it out with his piercing gaze. Bai Jing said that he had not eaten anything today and asked if he could have some chicken. Li Su had not yet had time to answer anything, but Gu Yuan said that the guy could take everything without any problems. Bai Jing took all the chicken legs and, thanking the owners, left the house, and Li Su cried over her food. Frustrated, Li Su watched her food, and Gu Yuan decided to talk to her. The guy asked why the girl was doing all this and tried to explain that he was doing everything for her. But Li Su in response asked him why he thought that he could decide their fate for others. Gu Yuan tried to say something in his own defense, but the girl interrupted him. Li Su asked what it was like to interfere in someone else's life for her mother's money. The girl also said that she would not give up until she resolved all the issues with the fictitious business alliance. Li Su said that she perfectly understands that Gu Yuan is not interested in anything and has his own goals, but did he even ask her about her desire? Li Su started screaming that she didn't want to be treated like a doll, because it wasn't fair. After her little cry from the heart, Li Su turned around and walked away from the guys. The girl quickly ran to her room, and Gu Yuan felt guilty towards the girl for the first time in a long time. Frightened but joyful, Han Shi asked Gu Yuan how he was and what he was feeling. The guy gritted his teeth and said that everything was fine with him, but an unpleasant aftertaste remained. The guy took the wig off his head and said that today he realized something very important. Gu Yuan unexpectedly opened his eyes today and saw that he was actually just selfish. Memories came flooding back to Gu Yuan when his mother died, everyone around him called him a black sheep and said that in the Gu family everyone only thinks about profit. The guy was depressed and couldn't cope with his feelings, for him it was a terrible loss. Little Gu Yuan thought about the loss of his mother for a long time and could not cope with it. All his life, Gu Yuan carried this loss within himself, because he didn't even have anyone to tell about his problems. Gu Yuan decided to go to the Li Corporation office to meet Li Xiao. The guy tried to muster up courage and find out about everything, he was interested in Li Su's life. He plucked up his courage and headed towards the main entrance expecting to meet Li Xiao. The director stood with her subordinate in the corridor and entrusted him with an important plan for their company. Gu Yuan went to the reception and asked the girl to meet Li Xiao, but she said that an appointment was needed for this. Gu Yuan talked about the girl calling the director, because he had important business with her, but she did not change her mind. Director Li heard everything and went to the guy, after which she asked what business he was talking about. The girl told the director that this gentleman had not made an appointment with her and had only come now. Gu Yuan, seeing the director, immediately turned to her and said that they had not seen each other for a long time. The guy put his hand on his heart and said that he had a very important matter with the girl. Now they were already sitting in the director's office and Gu Yuan was trying to find words for conversation. Gu Yuan said that he had a serious talk with Li Su and concluded that he would have to dissolve the marriage contract. Li Xiao reacted surprisingly calmly and asked why she should do this. Gu Yuan explained that Li Su must choose for herself with whom she connects her future life. Li Xiao asked if Gu Yuan had failed in her transformation and was now trying to escape. The girl explained that Li Su was her daughter and one of the Li family, 
and Gu Yuan denied that he wanted to run away. The girl explained that a lot depends on Li Su, and her position has enormous weight in the company and family. Gu Yuan was a little afraid of the girl, but still decided to say that Li Su's destiny should be hers. The guy said that he understood what Li Xiao was getting at, so he would not raise this issue anymore. But he had a huge interest in Li Su's fate, so he asked what influenced her character. Li Xiao sat opposite the guy and looked seriously in his direction, her gaze simply looking through him. But her face also changed dramatically and she began to laugh quietly after this question. Li Xiao said that she had been waiting for this question from Gu Yuan for a very long time, so now she will tell everything. Li Xiao also explained to the guy that she was waiting for this question, because after it the guy would take the matter seriously. As a child, Li Su knew a guy, he was the son of the director of the company, Li. This cute boy introduced Little Fox to Manga when they were friends. Together with him, the girl plunged into the 2D world and they often began to play all sorts of games. Everything was fine until the boy's father started gambling. Due to debts, he illegally appropriated the company's property and Li Xiao was forced to fire him. And being at a dead end, the dirty hands of this family took hold of poor Fox, who was communicating with their son. Gu Yuan listened to this whole story in horror, anticipating further actions. Poor Fox was kidnapped and locked in the basement, it was her friend and father who worked at the company. The guy tried to reassure the girl that he did not want to kidnap her, they simply had no choice. In exchange for Lisa, the criminals asked for half a million yuan so as not to touch the girl. Of course, Li Su heard all this, she especially remembered the threats, how the man said that he would kill her. The crying Li Su heard the voice of Gu Yuan, who returned to her home and called her by name. The guy apologized and said that he was not the most caring person and had not thought about her problems and experiences before. Gu Yuan said that he bought the most delicious fried chicken for them as an apology. The guy left the chicken next to the girl and told her not to forget to eat. The girl creaked open the door of her room and saw gifts from Gu Yuan. The hungry girl immediately grabbed the box and dragged it to her room. The girl looked at the box with the chicken and her mouth was drooling from hunger. The fox, who had not eaten all day, finally touched the crust with great pleasure with her teeth. Meanwhile, Tian Qin stood in his office and tried to dial someone on the phone. And Bai Jing entered the room, asking the guy where he was going to call. Bai Jing stood in his menacing pose and fixed his glassy gaze directly on Tian Qin. The guy said that he should call Uncle Han right now and tell him everything. Tian Qin also explained that he wanted to get a divorce so that Li Su would not suffer. But Bai Jing had a different opinion the agent knocked the phone out of his artist's hands and took him by the shoulders. The agent explained to the guy that for the sake of his future, he should not interfere in other people's problems. The story flashes back to Lisu's memory as the girl was tied to a pipe in the basement. Lisu's mouth was tied and she was completely immobilized and depressed, the betrayal of her friend hit the girl very hard. The girl saw light from the door and desperately tried to call for help, but nothing worked. And then the same friend with whom little Lisu spent most of her time entered the room. The guy said that he didn't expect this, they were able to take the vile lady from the Lee family. The criminal approached the girl and pulled the tape off her mouth to talk to her for a bit. The guy said that Lisa got what she deserved for her behavior and everything her mother did. Lisu looked at her friend in horror and greedily swallowed air, which was already scarce in the enclosed space. The guy said that this was great, because the hostage didn't even have the strength to call for help. Li Su asked the guy why he was doing this to her, and the girl also asked if they weren't friends. The attacker was greatly amused by the girl's words, and he ironically confirmed that they were friends. But the guy couldn't restrain his emotions and asked how they could be friends. Li Su's former friend began to laugh loudly, which greatly offended the poor girl. The girl did not understand such a reaction and was greatly humiliated in front of herself, she could not believe that her friend turned out to be a traitor. The guy asked if Li Su really hopes that she will ever have real friends. The guy said that the girl's mother is rich, and Li Su herself is a stupid girl with her mother's money. The boy also said that no one would ever want to communicate with Li Su, because she is a spoiled fool. The boy also added that she has the most boring character and he himself put up with it for a long time. At that moment, Li Su's life changed, 
she realized that her only friend was friends with her only because of money. The guy turned to the side and heard someone running around the door and on the top floor. It was the police who knocked down the door to the basement and demanded the guy not to move and to put his hands behind his head. Li Xiao ran to her daughter while the police tied up the guy and the officers read him his rights. The mother immediately hugged her daughter and said that they had finally found her. Tears appeared in the girl's eyes. She was very glad that she was saved and her mother personally came for her. In her memories, Lisa saw behind her mother's back the gamepad with which her life is connected. The girl did not understand what was happening, but this object became a symbol in her life. It was in video games that Lisu could hide from all her problems and society. Gu Yuan woke up the girl and showed that he had bought a gamepad, now he wanted to cheer up Lisa. Lisu was upset by all her memories of the hard times in her life. The girl felt absolutely disgusting, but Gu Yuan tried to cheer her up. The guy saw the girl's poor condition and thought about how to entice her or please her. Gu Yuan touched his index finger to the girl's cheek to attract her attention. The guy invited the girl to play together those games that she had previously played alone. Lisa herself did not appreciate the guy's actions and his attempts to appease her after everything that happened. Gu Yuan still tried to win over the girl and win her trust but Li Su herself understood that the guy came here for money. He realized that he would have to talk about what happened and promised to explain everything. Gu Yuan apologized to the girl, sincerity was felt in his words, the guy also said that he would no longer force or persuade the girl to get married. But the guy also clarified that despite this, Li Su cannot simply close herself off from everyone further. The guy began to shake the girl and ask for cooperation, he assured that he did not need money but that he was doing everything for her good and the girl needed to take the first step towards transformation. The fox was already fed up with the guy's requests and, with a chicken in her mouth, she simply turned away from him in the other direction. Gu Yuan said that they could spend more time with each other and even become friends. The word friends frightened the fox very much and she even tore her attention away from her beloved chicken. The girl remembered the words of her traitor friend, who said that no one was interested in her and that everyone would be friends with her only because of her rich mother. Li Su quietly asked the guy to get out of here, but the dull Gu Yuan asked again, what did the girl say? Li Su shouted to the guy that she didn't need any transformation and asked him to get lost. The girl pushed the guy away from her behind the door of her room so as not to see him. The doors to the girl's room slammed in the guy's face and Gu Yuan knew that it would be difficult for him to earn the fox's trust. Meanwhile, Tianqin's agent continued to scold the guy and warned him not to interfere in the affairs of the Han family. Tianqin asked what kind of future Bai Jing is talking about and how does it directly affect him. Bai Jing said he researched Li Su's personality in detail while he was at her home. There are no women's shoes at the entrance, there are no women's clothes on the hangers, it doesn't look like a place where a girl lives. In addition, there is a huge amount of insurance company advertising on the table, there is definitely a hidden meaning in this. Tian Qin said that Bai Jing was just making his conspiracy theories again and all his words were illogical. Bai Jing said that the most important thing is that the Li and Han families have a business relationship and this should not concern them in any way. The agent further said that Tian Qin, as a public person, should not comment on this or interfere in other people's affairs. Tian Qin said that Bai Jing was exaggerating, but the agent threatened that if his client made this case public, he would kill him. Bai Jing's appearance spoke of his serious intentions and that he was not joking at all with his threats. The frightened Tian Qin confirmed the agent's words with a trembling voice and said that he agreed with him. Bai Jing was happy that he was able to put the talkative client in his place and solve the Han and Li family's marriage problems. Bai Zhang left the office and was unhappy that this alliance was causing him so many problems. And the agent also remembered that one guy had to undergo a major transformation for this. Bai Zhang, when he was in Lisa's house, noticed a disguised Hanshi in one of the maids. The story goes back to a couple of years where little Lisu is talking to her mom on the phone and asking when will she come home? The girl replied that she was already driving in the car and asked her daughter what she should buy for dinner. Joyful Lisu said that she wanted chicken, but her mother didn't really want it, because so much fast food could harm her figure. But despite this, Li Xiao, like a loving mother, stopped by KFS and placed an order for 10 wings. Behind the girl, schoolgirls were bullying their peers, the girl was sitting alone and the bullies were calling her a homeless woman. The girls made fun of the girl's figure, saying that her curves would not increase if she ate so much fast food. The girl herself did not react in any way to the bullies, 
but simply ate her burger in silence. The hooligans did not like the fact that the schoolgirl ignored their insults. One of the bullies hit the girl on the cheek and said that they were actually talking to her and she should pay attention to them. Then the girls began to call the poor girl even more names, saying that she was neither a boy nor a girl but a transvestite. They threw the tray of food aside and said that such a nonentity deserves to eat only scraps. The cashier notified Li Xiao that her order was ready and the girl could pick it up, she herself was distracted from the conflict between the schoolgirls. Two guys also went into the cafe and contemptuously asked the girls how aren't they ashamed to do this? It was Han Qi and Tian Qin who ridiculed the hooligans for bullying a defenseless girl. Tian Qin said that when he saw the girls from afar, he thought they were ugly but when he came closer he realized that they also smelled disgusting. The most cocky of them tried to approach the guys, but her friends stopped her. The friends explained that this was Hanshi, the same heir from the Han family, so it was better to get out of here. The main bully gritted her teeth and understood that it was better not to quarrel with such serious people. The girl walked away and said that she would remember this to the guy, but Hanshi and Tian Qin continued to laugh at them. Hanshi approached the girl who was being bullied and asked how she was, after which he offered his fries. Meanwhile, Li Xiao noticed the kind guy who was trying to please the poor girl. In real time, Hanshi and Gu Yuan were sitting in the kitchen and one of the guys could see their despair. Gu Yuan sighed loudly, greatly irritating Hanshi who was standing behind the stove. Hanshi expressed his dissatisfaction and said that the guy had already infuriated him with his constant sighs. Gu Yuan said that Hanshi was boring and fell even more in his chair due to his insignificance. Gu Yuan talked about his problem, he promised Mrs. Li that he would not persuade her to marry, but before that, he signed an agreement with Director Li. Gu Yuan grabbed Hanshi's hands and said that in this case, he would have to pay a penalty of 1 million yuan. The guy said that he definitely couldn't pay the fine and tried to find out from his friend how he could persuade Lisa to marry or Li Xiao to break the contract. Hanshi himself did not want marriage, but he also understood that Director Li could not be persuaded to the other side. Gu Yuan asked why his comrade was so sure of this, doesn't a mother think about her daughter's happiness? Hanshi said that tall people and businessmen like Li Xiao have no heart. The guy also said that they are ready to sell their children for the prosperity of the company, but they have no happiness, Gu Yuan asked how Hanshi knows this. Hanshi realized that he had let it slip and said what he saw in the dramas on TV while he was sitting in the living room. Next, Hanshi took the prepared food and suggested a better idea to Gu Yuan. The guy asked Gu Yuan to go and feed the lady to try to make peace. Gu Yuan reluctantly took the plate in his hands and said that the girl had been ignoring him for a whole day. But the guy did not give up trying to take the first step towards reconciliation and went to Lisu's room. Gu Yuan opened the door and asked Mrs. Li if he could come into her room. The girl lay in complete darkness in the corner of the room and made no sounds, which greatly frightened Gu Yuan. The guy's heart almost jumped out and he asked Mrs. Li not to scare him so much anymore. Gu Yuan put the plate on the floor and told Mrs. Li to remember to eat. Li Su was still offended that the guy was communicating with her for money and did not answer him at all. Gu Yuan said that Li Su looked at him with such a look that he didn't even know what to do. Li Su told the guy that she was able to hear about the contract between her mother and Gu Yuan. The upset girl recalled the million yuan and began to blame herself for everything and call herself worthless and problematic. But Gu Yuan asked the girl not to worry and said that one million is his problem and he will solve it himself. Lisa herself was inspired by the fact that the guy did not cry to her at all, but boldly declared that he would resolve everything himself. Gu Yuan walked out of the girl's room, he was happy that she could talk to him. But he was also upset that he found himself in such a difficult situation and began to cry at the door. Saddened, Gu Yuan sat next to Hanshi, who asked the guy how he was going to make a million? Gu Yuan was in complete despair and said that he had no idea where he could get a million. Hanshi decided that there were only two options to solve the guy's problems with the contract. The first was to find Director Li and renegotiate the terms of the contract with her or force her to waive the penalty. Gu Yuan immediately rejected this option. He did not see any effective ways to put pressure on Li Xiao and added that she would simply eat him. The second option was for Mrs. Li to help the guy with this and start changing. Gu Yuan said that this won't do, 
he can't ask Li Su for help anymore after everything that happened. Han Shi said that Li Su is the only person who can help Gu Yuan now. Gu Yuan stood up and repeated that he would not ask Li Su for help under any circumstances. Han Shi said that the girl should just take responsibility, but Gu Yuan didn't want to talk about it any further. Gu Yuan said that he would find a way to earn money even if he had to betray his principles. This sentence left Han Shi with many questions and Gu Yuan simply slammed the doors to his room. The guy sat on the bed and remembered all the words that were told to him, he could not rely on anyone but himself. His surroundings told him that in this world there are only traitors whom he cannot trust. Even the guy's own mother asked him not to rely on her and live independently. Gu Yuan felt his insignificance and told himself that he would curse himself if he could not get a million. Li Su overheard the guy and thought with regret that she had once again become a burden to others. The girl decided for herself that she only knows how to create problems for others. The girl saw her stand with figurines and leisurely walked straight towards it. He opened the bedside table which was below, apparently it contained something that should help her now. It was Lisu's old phone, which she picked up. The girl reluctantly unlocked the screen and began looking for everything she needed there. The girl went into contacts and tried to find a person who could help her. This someone was her mother, Lisu had not communicated with her for a long time, but now it was necessary. Li Xiao's voice greatly frightened the girl who jumped away in the other direction. Li Su hid in the corner again and heard her mother calling her through the speakerphone. The girl understood that now she had to help Gu Yuan, and not hide from her problems. Nervously and apprehensively, Li Su returned to her phone and picked it up from the floor. Li Su put the phone receiver to her ear with trembling hands and began to listen to her mother's voice. Li Xiao was of course glad that her daughter decided to call her again after so long. Hearing her daughter's voice, Li Xiao was moved and said that she was very happy to hear her. Li Su whispered about one million, while her mother sobbed into the phone. Li Xiao was still wiping away her tears, despite the fact that the girl was not yet ready for marriage, she called her mother, which means that there was progress in the work. Li Xiao understood what they were talking about, and Li Su asked her mother more about Gu Yuan. Li Xiao wanted to tell the girl not to worry but then she came to her senses. Li Xiao came to the realization that her daughter was worried about Gu Yuan and his debt. Here Li Xiao immediately imagined the warm relationship between Li Su and Gu Yuan, where the guy says that if she does not marry Mr. Han, he will be fined. Gu Yuan says that all these thoughts frighten him and haunt him at night in nightmares. And after that, Li Su will not allow the guy to suffer so much and will want to become a beautiful lady herself. The couple would hug and Li Su would promise to become a lady, this was Li Xiao's new plan. Therefore, Li Xiao understood that she couldn't just forgive the debt now and cleared her throat. Li Xiao confirmed her daughter's words that Gu Yuan was indebted to her and could be fined. Therefore, the mother wished her daughter good luck, and Li Su did not understand what to do next. Lisa asked and asked Tian Qin if he could help her terminate the marriage contract. Tian Qin began muttering to the girl that he really wanted to help her, but, unfortunately, he couldn't. Upset, Li Su asked the guy if he wanted her to marry Han Shi. The girl's eyes filled with tears and she said that Tian Qin had such a calm look, did he really want her to suffer? But all this turned out to be an ordinary nightmare for Tian Qin, who woke up from this and thought what should he do. Tian Qin thought that he should still apologize to Li Su for deceiving her. Some time later, Tian Qin was sitting on the sofa next to his agent Bai Jing. The guy turned his attention to his agent, waiting for him to fall asleep or go somewhere. Bai Jing actually fell asleep right on the sofa while the celebrity was looking at her phone. Tian Qin had been waiting for this moment and quietly got up from the sofa so as not to wake up Bai Jing. Tian Qin whispered on the phone and asked his interlocutor what he learned about the Lisu case. The guy Tian Qin was talking to said that he found out the school where Lisu studies and will now send the address. But Tian Qin was frightened by Bai Jing's voice, who woke up and asked the guy what he was doing? Tian Qin managed to hide the phone and said that he was not doing anything, but Bai Jing understood that his client was up to something. Already at school, a guy in a gloomy coat walked past the girls who were discussing Zhou Tianqing's new album. This gloomy guy turned out to be the singer himself, who was pleased to hear praise from his fans. But this was not so important now because he came here to find the fox and he succeeded. The girl was sitting under a tree and playing her console, surrounded by Tony's company. The guy approached the girl and said that they had met again, 
and then asked if she remembered him. Tony was outraged by the guy's appearance and asked who he was and whether he had made an appointment. But then Tony decided to compare the appearance of Lee Su and Tian Qin and realized that they were dressed the same. The guy thought up some theory in his head and said that everything became clear to him. Tony gathered his guys around him and began to explain to them who Tian Qin was. The guys bowed to Tian Qin and said that they greeted the honorable brother-in-law. Han Shi also approached the fox, but he saw his friend here and wondered what he was doing here. Han hid behind a tree and understood that Tian Qin should not see him here. But while he was hiding, I could see an even more interesting picture of how the woman communicated with Gu Yuan. The woman told the guy that she would not interfere with his studies, and Gu Yuan thanked her. Next, the flirting woman asked the guy to come to her in the evening to earn money. Before leaving, the woman called the guy handsome and Han Shi tried to understand what his friend was up to. And then he remembered Gu Yuan's words when he said that he would earn money by any means, even if he had to step over himself. And then a realization came to Han, he demanded of himself that he had to stop the guy from doing this. But first, he should have tried to talk to the lady before going to Gu Yuan. Tian Qin did not understand what this all meant and thought that he had been recognized and this was just a new way of greeting fans. Han Shi ran up to the company and told Fox that they had a real problem. Tian Qin looked at Han in surprise and recognized him as his friend who should be living abroad. Han Shi covered Tian Qin's mouth with his hand and asked him not to talk at all. Han Shi realized that because of the situation with Gu Yuan, he had completely forgotten about his talkative friend. Tony asked Han what he was doing and asked him to release brother-in-law immediately. Han Shi paid no attention to anyone and explained to Fox that Gu Yuan was trying to make money by selling his body. Han Shi noticed the fox and looked in his direction when he told about Gu Yuan's plan. But the girl was more interested in games and so she stared at her console again. Han asked the girl if she really didn't care about Gu Yuan after everything he had done. Tian Qin immediately began asking the guy about what happened and who is missing the money. Han realized that he would not receive support and help from Li Su and that he needed to decide everything himself. The guy hit his chatty friend and said that he urgently needed to figure out how to help Gu Yuan. Han took his friend under a tree and began to explain the whole story to him from the very beginning. Tian Qin listened to everything carefully and a lot began to fall into place in his head. But what amused Tian Qin most of all was the fact that the maid in disguise was Han Shi himself. Tang Qian began to laugh laugh loudly at this, and Han Shi could only watch with displeasure. The blonde invited his friend to laugh another time and asked if he could borrow a million. Tian Qin said that he would gladly help, but all his money is with the agent. The artist also asked about Senior Han's money, couldn't Han Shi ask his father for it? Han Shi told his friend that he had apparently seen enough of the TV series and explained that in real life, no one just gives a lot of money for pocket money, which will immediately evaporate. Then Tian Qin came up with his own plan, which was supposed to reconcile all parties. The artist rushed at his friend and said that in this case he could simply marry Lisa and then everyone would be fine. Han Shi didn't even consider this plan and now, after studying, the blonde sat in the living room. He expected Gu Yuan to arrive, but he still didn't show up, which could mean that he really took such a step. While Han Shi was lying in despair and sadness, he heard the doors to Li Su's room opening. Li Su was dressed like a real lady, a chic dress, hairstyle, beautiful makeup, everything was with her. The girl asked Han Shi why he was staring and called for her, and the guy asked where exactly. Li Su looked at the guy and said that they would now go to save Gu Yuan. Li Su and Han Shi had already gone out into the street and walked through the evening city. Han Shi said that he didn't even know where to look for the guy but Li Su foresaw this and asked Tony to break through his phone. Tony was very knowledgeable about programming and computers, so he responded to the request. For the bully, such work did not take much time, and therefore it was not difficult to break through Gu Yuan, and after a couple of minutes, joyful Tony sent the coordinates to Fox's phone. The girl notified her friend that Tony had sent her the coordinates. Li Su asked the guy not to come in with her when they got there. Han Shi asked why and the girl replied that he was now in a brothel, similar to a cafe. And the guy looks like an innocent schoolboy who has never been to such places. The girl looked at the sign and noted that this establishment was too well camouflaged. Li Su said that now he would save the guy, and then go home to eat chicken. The bell rang at the entrance as soon as Li Su opened the door and the waiters immediately ran to the door. The girl stood and looked around the establishments in surprise, trying to find Gu Yuan. But it didn't take long to look for the guy, 
he met Lisa and asked what the girl would order. Li Su was surprised to see her friend in a suit working as a waiter. Gu Yuan didn't recognize the girl at first, but upon closer inspection he realized that it was Mrs. Li. While Gu Yuan was wondering how Mrs. Li could find it, Li Su herself realized that this was an ordinary cafe. The woman who took the guy to work also came over and asked if Gu Yuan was all right. The guy said that he was fine, just family members came to visit him. The woman saw Lisa and mistook her for Gu Yuan's relative, so she came closer. The woman said that she was glad to meet Li Su and if she ordered, she could give her a discount. And at that moment, Tian Qin appeared in the cafe as if out of nowhere, who also wanted to save Gu Yuan. The artist said that saving people is very cool and he cannot stand aside at this moment. He explained that he had been following Han Qi and Li Su all the way, which is why he came here. Tian Qin asked Han and Gu Yuan if they were surprised, and the woman recognized him as a singer. The woman attacked the guy and said that he was the same Zhou Tian Qin that everyone was talking about now. The woman threw her arms around the artist and said that she loved him madly. A crowd of female fans also recognized the guy and rushed towards him with their phones. A few moments later, Tian Qin was completely surrounded by his fans. Meanwhile, Li Su tugged at Gu Yuan's jacket to make him look away from the crowd and pay attention to her. The girl suggested that the guy go home together right now and eat fried chicken. Gu Yuan didn't want to stay here anymore, so he quickly agreed to the proposal. The girl took his hand and they began to look for a passage among the crowd of fans. Gu Yuan led the girl along while the others in the hall could not get rid of the celebrity. Tian Qin saw his friends leaving the cafe and asked where they were going. The guy begged the guys to wait for him and come back for him, but they didn't even hear him. Han Shi walked tensely from side to side in front of the entrance, waiting for his friends. He saw Gu Yuan and Li Su walking hand in hand and finally cried out that he had waited for them. Han Shi told Gu Yuan that if he did this again, the guy would call the police. Han Shi examined Gu Yuan and gently asked if he was okay. Surprised, Gu Yuan pointed at himself and asked what could have happened to him and why Han was talking about it so worriedly. Gu Yuan also told a friend that some celebrity had arrived there and was surrounded by fans. An angry Bizeng also arrived at the cafe, looking for his star. Frightened, Gu Yuan pointed towards the cafe and said that it was the star who had problems, but everything was fine with him. Li Su again felt all the fears of social anxiety and passed out right in front of the guys. The guys did not let the exhausted girl fall and quickly the two of them caught her in flight. Li Su was on Gu Yuan's back, and Han Shi realized that the guy had gone to work as a simple waiter. Gu Yuan asked, does he really look like someone who can sell his body? Han Shi looked at the guy with a disapproving glance and assured that that was exactly what he thought. However, Gu Yuan was not in the mood to be angry with Han Shi, he was happy for this evening. The guy said that he was very glad that his friends came to his aid. But his mood was ruined by Han Shi, who reminded him of the debt of a million yuan. Gu Yuan looked at the guy and thanked him for reminding him of this. For Gu Yuan, it all seemed like a dream and now at home Li Su woke up after losing consciousness. The girl saw Gu Yuan in front of her, handing her food and asking about her well-being. The girl immediately jumped away from the guy and hid in the corner, pressing her knees. Gu Yuan realized what was going on, so he simply left the food on the floor and didn't say anything. Before leaving, he only wished the fox good luck and asked her not to forget to eat. But then he was stopped by Lisa himself, who asked him to wait. The girl handed the gamepad into the guy's hands and asked if he still wanted to play with her. This offer surprised the guy very much, he could not refuse it, because he wanted to become a friend for Li Su. The guys entered one of the most unpleasant games for two, where spouses get divorced and friends quarrel a lot. The guy was not at all able to play the breakup restaurant game, but Li Su put up with it all. The guy ruined everything and apologized for ruining the girl's game, and the irritated Li Su could barely contain herself. Han Shi was watching TV series on his phone, and Gu Yuan was pushed out of his room by the girl. Bai Jing scolded Tian Qing for being too bold after meeting Lady Li. It was already difficult to control the guy and Bai Jing asked if he wanted to apologize for his behavior. Bai Jing reproached the guy for the fact that he had to use a lot of connections in order to understand today's problems and they did not appear on the front pages of the news. Tian Qin said that he didn't do anything wrong today but just helped his friends. Bai Jing looked at his client with complete anger and said that he would now clarify what he had done wrong. The agent said that the guy was making out with a fan in front of everyone, 
in front of the public and on camera. Tian Qin said that there is nothing wrong with a celebrity hugging a beautiful fan. Bai Jin asked if Tian Qin realized his mistake and the star had no choice but to admit he was wrong, after which his agent threatened him again. Li Xiao was talking to his daughter on the phone in his office and said that she could certainly buy a new figurine. Next, mommy asked Lisa how much her new toy cost, and the girl hesitated for a long time before answering. Li Su said that her new toy cost a million yuan, but Li Xiao couldn't be fooled that easily, she understood what her daughter wanted. Li Xiao immediately changed her tone and said that she sensed her daughter's deception, and then asked if she was really so worried about Gu Yuan. Li Xiao said that she would not allow her daughter to secretly give money to someone and deceive her mother. Therefore, while Gu Yuan is at work, Li Xiao is forced to deny her daughter pocket money. Meanwhile, Han Shi was playing video games in the computer class and a classmate noticed it. The guy was told that if he played well, he could earn income from the game. Meanwhile, Gu Yuan stood in front of the door to Li Su's room and notified her that he had brought food. The girl extended her hands and asked to give her everything through the door. Gu Yuan didn't even have time to look at the girl before the plate of food disappeared from his hands. The guy said that he hoped that after the incident in the cafe the girl would feel better, but she became even more withdrawn into herself. Gu Yuan was indignant that the girl did not leave the room at all and played games all day long, especially since she had huge bruises under her eyes. And then the guy noticed that Han Shi was not listening to him at all and spoke out to him about this. Gu Yuan explained that before the girl was just an introvert, but now she is just addicted and if Li Xiao finds out about this, she will kill him. Han Shi hinted to the guy that Li Su was just acting like an ordinary girl and was missing something. Gu Yuan thought about the relationship and immediately blushed, Apparently Han really opened his eyes. Gu Yuan called the guy over and began to whisper his guesses in his ear. The guy told Han Shi about the girl's appearance, her figure, pretty face and so on. But Han Shi threw the guy aside and said that he meant simple female friendship. Han said that there are some things that Mrs. Lee cannot share with them. In general, Han thought that she definitely needed a best friend and as quickly as possible. Gu Yuan also thought that it would be nice to find a best friend for Li Su. Girls could discuss cosmetics, clothes and other feminine things together. They would also be able to go shopping and buy beautiful clothes. And also discuss the boys, quietly, so that no one would hear, especially Gu Yuan himself. Gu Yuan asked where they could find a best friend for Li Su in the shortest possible time. Han Shi also said that it wouldn't be that easy given Li Su's difficult nature. In general, few girls would be able to make friends with a young mistress who is completely closed off to herself. And then the next day a new girl came to the school where all three were studying. To begin with, the goofy schoolgirl began to look around and look for what she came here for. First, she approached the schoolgirls and asked if they had seen Lisa here or maybe they knew her. The girl said that she was the most popular girl in school and was most likely in class right now. The girl thanked the schoolgirls for the information and went to Fox's class. As she approached the class, she thought about the fact that this girl is now the most popular in school. Meanwhile, everything in the class was boring, the rest of the schoolchildren were waiting for lessons, and Li Su was playing with Tony's company. The girl was glad that she was able to earn money in her game and receive the first payment. But she was distracted by a new girl who greeted the girl and called her by name. The girl said that she was finally able to find the fox and stood right in front of her. The frightened Li Su looked towards the new girl and did not understand who it was and what she wanted from her. Gu Yuan also saw the new girl enter the classroom and walk towards Li Su. This was the same girlfriend they found for Li Su, he was happy expecting a warm meeting. The guy expected that the girls would initially like each other and become best friends. But suddenly the new girl asked if Lisa dared to fight her. The girl asked whether Lisa accepted her challenge to a duel or was she chickened out. One of Lisu's friends asked the new girl how she could talk to Mrs. Lee like that. The girl didn't talk to the guy for a long time and simply sent him away from her with one blow. Then Tony decided to intervene, who was outraged that his brothers were being beaten. But the girl turned out to be not a weak one, so she quickly defeated Tony's entire company. The cocky girl said that these guys were complete wimps. Next, she walked towards the fox and snatched the console from her hands, Gu Yuan understood that this was a very bad sign. The new girl told Fox to stop playing and asked if Miss Li was deaf for an hour. The console was very important to Li Su and therefore she was very angry when she was torn away from the game. But Gu Yuan decided to intervene in the conflict, 
standing between the girls and asking everyone to calm down and calling for a conversation. The girl said that she did not intend to talk to Lisu, she just wanted to fight with her. And as soon as she wins the fox in battle, then Mr. Han will become hers and no one else will take him away. Gu Yuan realized that his plan did not work and the best friends turned into rivals. The story flashes back to a couple of years ago, in KFS, where Han stood up for the girl. This girl turned out to be a cocky new girl, then Han said that if she didn't want to be pestered, she should learn to fight back. Tian Qin, meanwhile, pulled the guy away from the girl in order to have time to watch football. Before leaving, Hanshi said that brave girls are the coolest. The little girl, who was being bullied by everyone, was moved and even cried at Hanshi's words. The girl went to a taekwondo club to be able to protect herself. The girl was full of determination and wanted to change for the better in order to please Hanshi. After long training, the girl beat the guys in crowds and no one wanted to fight with her. After her transformation, she wrote a love letter with a confession and wanted to give it to Hanshi. Hanshi and Tian Qin were leaving the classroom and the girl was already preparing to head towards them. Tian Qin asked if the girl from the next class confessed her feelings to him, and Han replied that he refused her. Tian Qin asked why the guy refused her, because the girl seemed quite nice? Hanshi became a little embarrassed and said that he liked feminine girls more. After this, the girl's heart broke and she let go of her letter. The love letter fell to the floor and the schoolgirl ran over it with her shoes. The actions are transferred to reality, where the girl decided for herself that after the news of the engagement she would not be able to ignore it. The girl said that if she doesn't try harder and make every effort, then nothing will work out. In this case, she will miss out on the guy she really likes. And her love of her life will go to this self-contained girl. There was a real conflict between the girls, which Gu Yuan tried to resolve with words. Gu Yuan came closer to the new girl and explained that she had misunderstood everything, in fact, Mrs. Li was against marriage. And then Han Shi entered the class, who, having heard dissatisfied voices, came to sort things out. Han recognized the girl and she realized that I could reveal her right now. The girl looked at the crowds of beaten guys and thought how she could get out of this situation. She grabbed her shoulder and asked indignantly, how could Gu Yuan attack a defenseless girl? The girl quickly began to cry and said that the guy had just hurt her. She held her shoulder and felt very sorry for everyone around her. Gu Yuan didn't understand what the hell was going on here, and the girl pretended to faint. Her plan worked and Hanshi said that he would immediately take the poor man to the infirmary. Hanshi took the girl in his arms and immediately noticed her face. The guy wondered why the girl's face was so red right now. The girl's plan worked and Hanshi thought that she had hit her head when she fell. 